Good evening, everyone. If you're just joining us uh, and you're here to speak on an application, please use your Q&A function at the bottom of the screen to let us know what application you're here to speak on and we'll get you signed up. I just remind everyone if you're the applicant and you're here to speak on an application, uh, you have 30 minutes uh, to make your presentation. If you're a member of the community, we ask you to keep your comments to three minutes. Uh, welcome to the Wednesday, June 9th, 2021 Town of Isa Planning Board meeting. I at this time want to call roll. Mr. Brown. Present. Mr. Bruno. Here. Ms. Cruz. I'm here. Mr. Frugiari. I'm here. Mr. Matamor. Mr. Matamor. Mr. Moriarty. I'm here. Mr. Matamor is here. I'm sorry. I was muted. Thank you, Mr. Matamor. Uh, Barbara, can you hear us all? Yes, I can. Thank you. Perfect. First item on the agenda, planning board application public hearing, Moonfish Brewery, Inc., PB2021-018, east side of Degnan Boulevard, 657 feet south of Montauk Highway, State Route 27A, Bayshore, 25 Degnan Boulevard. After request a planning board special permit for a bar, tavern, or nightclub in the Industrial One District, pursuant to 68-341.1V, site plan modifications are also requested as part of this application. Good evening to the applicant. Go right ahead when you're ready. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes. Appearing on behalf of the applicant, Eugene L. D. Nicola, 200 Railroad Avenue, Sayville, New York. Uh, okay, we're on the screen. <clears throat> the applicant is requesting a planning board special permit to permit a tasting room uh, ac accessory to a craft brewery. The publication of the proposed use states a bar, tavern, or nightclub since there is no classification for the um, proposed use in the ordinance, that is a tasting room as part of a craft brewery. The subject site is located on the east side of Degden Boulevard, approximately 657 feet south of Montauk Highway, Bayshore. The subject property is zoned Industrial One District. Abutting the subject site to the north and south are industrially, Industrial One zone properties, with industrial uses operating thereon. To the west across Degnan Boulevard is a residential, um, uh, residential uses. To the east across Arawak Creek, um, the property is owned Industrial One, uh, which includes the white cap fish operation, which also has a, an outdoor dining area. Uh, there's also other uses. The property will be more fully described by a real estate expert when at the conclusion of my presentation. The property abutting on the north is the Sunrise Seafood Operation, which appears to be a wholesale, um, a wholesale and retail operation of seafood. Abutting on the south is a boat storage and repair operation. And further south is the Long Island Yachts, uh, Yacht Sales, uh, Boat Storage and Repairs. <clears throat> Excuse me. The subject site extends from the east side of Degnan Boulevard to Arawak Creek. It has frontage on Degnan Boulevard of 142.72 feet, and the parcel contains 24,247 square feet of plot area, as you'll notice on the site plan irregular. There is currently existing two buildings on the site. The uh, one, one building is on the north side. It's a one-story metal building containing approximately 4,900 square feet of gross floor area. Uh, this building is set back from Degnan Boulevard. Uh, survey has been submitted with the application, only about three, three and a half feet. Uh, and it extends to within seven or eight feet of Orowak Creek. The second building is on the south side of the subject site and is a two-story frame building with a gross floor area of 3,126 square feet. That's 1,598 square feet on the first floor, 1,531 square feet on the second floor. And it is set back from Degnan Boulevard in excess of 100 feet. However, has a setback from Arawak Creek of 7.1 feet. There are certificate, uh, there, uh, both uh, buildings have a certificate of occupancy. The site um, has an unpaved gravel area, uh, very limited landscaping and there is no controlled access to the site from uh, Degnan Boulevard, coming from anywhere along the frontage. 
Now, the applicant is proposing to demolish and remove the one-story metal building on the north side and erect a new two-story building, which will be set back from Degnon Boulevard, 78 feet. Elevations of the proposed two-story building have been submitted with the application. The existing two-story building on the south side will, be, will remain, and the two buildings will be connected by a breezeway, which is, you will note, on the site plan, which is on the screen. Um, as noted on the colorized elevations and the colorized plans that were submitted, the frontage along Degnan Boulevard will be landscaped, uh, and access to the site will be by channelized access. Uh, uh, toward the south side, you'll notice the access. Uh, along Degnan Boulevard, screen planting will be uh, installed um, for the uh, entire uh, width of the property, with the exception of, obviously, the uh, access to the parking area. Uh, the parking area will be paved and striped, and the site will contain 25 parking spaces, which is the number of parking spaces required for the proposed uses. The overall site will now have, when completed, 6,999.6 square feet of landscape area, or approximately 28.9% of the overall parcel. And the front yard will have 995 uh, and a half uh, square feet of uh, landscape area. Now the ground floor of the new two-story building will contain a brewery for the production of craft beers and the proposed tasting room. Um, a floor plan has been submitted uh, showing the two uses on the first floor of the building to be erected. The square foot area of the craft brewery processing floor is 1,654 uh, and a half square feet. The square foot area of the proposed tasting room is 836 uh, square feet. Uh, so the area of the tasting room is approximately 16.8% of the floor area of the brewery building and 10% of the total building area. That would be the uh, new two-story building and the existing building and, breeze and breezeway. The second floor of the new two-story building is for equipment and storage. The existing two-story building on the south side of the site will contain offices, storage, break room, and lounge for employees. Now the operation, um, which will be, as I indicated, a brewery and a tasting room, uh, it will operate seven days a week. The tasting room, which is the subject of this application, will be open Monday through Thursday, 12 noon, to 9 p.m. and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 12 noon to 11 p.m. Patrons will attend the brewing tasting room to sample various craft brewed beers. Generally, they sample in two, three, uh, two or three ounce cups to decide which brew they prefer. They then may order a regular glass of that particular brew to uh, consume on premises um, or they may purchase a container to take home. If consumed in the tasting room, snacks are available such as hot pretzels, cheeses, peanuts, and the like fare. Now, a food truck will be on the premises at various times, only Thursday through Sunday, for those patrons who wish to have a regular meal with the brew selection uh, that they have made. On Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Live music will be provided indoors, which will be string instruments, uh, such as a guitar, bass fiddle, and uh, a, a, a keyboard. There will be no brass, and there will be no percussion instruments. And I want to emphasize this is not a music venue. It is strictly uh, an accompaniment, if you will, for the patrons. No hard liquor will be so uh, served. Um, however, in the future, perhaps New York State wines may also be available. Now, this is not your typical bar and grill that maybe we may be thinking of. There are those who have an interest in various type of craft brewed beers, just as there are individuals who have an interest in various wines and vintages. Uh, and those 
wine, uh, those persons interested in the various wines and vintages, they collect bottles of wine, uh, members of wine clubs, and go to the wineries, which have tasting rooms. Craft breweries and tasting rooms are a relatively new and popular phenomenon, from what I can gather. It is an opportunity for a pleasant evening with friends and to discuss the merits of the craft brews available, such as a wheat beer flavored with peaches, an espresso stout, or a nitro red ale. Um, and, and, and there are many other brews uh, that, uh, they, uh, that they have recipes for. If the patron elects to purchase a meal from the food truck, he or she will go to the food truck, which is a van type vehicle, and will be toward the rear of the premises and bring the meal into the tasting room. Patrons cannot take their brew selection outside the building. And just as a precaution, servers are trained to recognize when an individual may be drinking to excess, which is really not an issue, as I'm advised, in this type of um, a use or atmosphere. Um, this is not a venue for becoming inebriated, but to have a pleasant evening with friends and enjoy the taste of various craft brewed beers. The tasting room is also a marketing method to spread the word of the quality and taste of the craft brews of the brewery. The brewery will also um, brew the craft beer for sale to other retailers. Kegs will be delivered to bars, taverns, and other permitted venues for resale. Delivery to those retailers will be made by a van approximately one day, uh, once per day. The floor plan shows 22 seats uh, that are proposed in the tasting room. And that will be the number of seats that will be available. The total parking required for the uses on the premises is 24.1 rounded up to 25 parking spaces. So the applicant will be providing 25 parking stalls, which is the number of parking stalls that are required. Now, the number of employees on, uh, that will be uh, on, on uh, operating the brewery and the um, tasting room for the brewery, three brewers. However, generally only two will be on uh, the uh, property at any given time. For the tasting room, one manager and three servers will, and help during peak hours and one manager and one server off peak. Craft breweries, as I have indicated, are a relatively new phenomena with an interest in different flavored brews, just as tasting rooms uh, as part of wineries have been popular to taste the different wine vintages. No tents or outdoor events will take place in the parking area. Uh, the parking area will be reserved for parking of vehicles strictly. Now there are advantages to this application, the redevelopment of an otherwise obsolete non-productive property with a new attractive building and use, new investment in the town of Islip, increased employment opportunities, and an increased tax base. This is a, this craft brewery uh, is owned solely by two shareholders, both of whom are residents of Suffolk County. The property is on the that's that's the business. The business is Moonfish, um, is the applicant, uh, and uh, Moonfish Brewery INC. It's a corporation. The property is owned by one of the shareholders through her LLC, Limited Liability Company. The brewmaster for the brewery is the son-in-law. So it's a family operation, not a major corporation or not a major corporation type operation. The pros, proposed um, business operation is not a nightclub. It is not a late night venue, but a family friendly place to taste uh, various recipes of brewed beers. Mr. Chairman, at this time, uh, I would ask uh, that I be permitted to uh, submit testimony from a real estate appraiser, Mr. Michael Lynch. Fine, Mr. Nicole, before you do that, I have two questions for you. And I don't know if uh, Sean can put it back up on the screen. Where would the food truck be parking? You're saying not in the part where, where exactly you're saying in the back, I think you said. Well, 
What was your question, Mr. Chairman? I, I don't, uh, you said the food truck would be parking in the back. Where were you referencing? Um, it back? would be parked um, uh, where, where basically where the dumpster is, uh, in front of the um, um, the building that's marked building number one, existing two-story building. I think that would be the appropriate area for it. So you'd be parking in front of the uh, the handicapped parking spot is where you're suggesting. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it, someone would always be there. So if it had to be moved, it could be, it could be moved. It wouldn't be uh, actually blocking without anyone there to, uh, to, to move it. Right. And, and the other thing I, you said was there would be no events in the parking area. Did you mean no events outdoors, period? Or did you mean no events in the parking area? No, 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 no events outdoors, period. So there'll be no seating, nothing. Someone raised the question. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, the proposed deck that you're showing there and the rest is nothing that's going to be held outdoors. No, no seating. That deck no has been there. Uh, well, there is an existing deck there. Uh, and uh, let me make one other comment. Uh, there is uh, quite a frontage there for approximately four boats. So the possibility of, um, let's say, a boat coming up, docking and walking on the deck and going into the building. But outdoor events, the answer is no. So nothing outdoors. I just would, you know, I don't know if you're, if you're anybody here, any, your engineer, anybody here who could talk about the parking of the truck, but I would imagine a, a food truck and people getting in line would, you know, take up three to four parking spots. But if you want to go to your real estate appraiser, then have somebody speak to that. I'd certainly like to hear about that. And I'm just speaking from the brewery that opened in West Islip when they have that outdoor uh, the truck outside, it takes up basically, the, you know, half the parking lot, if not the entire parking lot gets roped off for it. So I would have certainly concerns about that. And this one's more in the middle of a residential neighborhood. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if I may, um, um, uh, Mr. Lynch, are you uh, there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lynch, would you please state your name, address, and profession for the board? Certainly. My name is Michael Lynch. I'm a state certified real estate appraiser with offices at 15 Dewey Street, Huntington, New York. I have appeared before this board in the past, as well as the other uh, town of Islip boards. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I submitted uh, written qualifications um, of Mr. Lynch, and I would uh, ask that they be made a part of the record. Thank you. We'll do so. Thank you. Mr. Lynch, um, have you made a site and area investigation at my request? And yes, I have. Have you formed an opinion on the merits of the application? And if so, would you please uh, indicate your findings and conclusions to the board? Absolutely, uh, Mr. D. Nicola. Um, I in, uh, inspected the property this past Monday. I, I took a series of photographs of the subject property as well as the surrounding neighborhood. I reviewed the application um, and I formed my conclusion um, so the property, without being too repetitive with Mr. Di Nicola, as you know, is, um, is along the east side of Degnan Boulevard, approximately 650 feet south of Main Street in the hamlet of Bayshore. Um, it has frontage along Ottawa Creek. Um, it's presently improved with the, the noted uh, roughly 5,000 square foot corrugated metal uh, building that's roughly three and a half feet set back from uh, Degnan Boulevard. Um, if we go to our photographs, you can see, um, I don't know if you can pull that up on the screen. I know they were submitted. Um, thank you. Um, if you go to photos one and two uh, and three, we can see that corrugated metal building that's proposed to be raised and replaced uh, with the new brewery uh, building with accessory tasting room. Um, that building, again, you can see the, the, the current state of it. It's, it's a tired old building. And again, it's only three and a half feet plus or minus set back from, from Degnan Boulevard. Um, in addition to that building on the property is a, is a two-story building as depicted uh, further back on the site that's um, in photos four and five, and that is planned to be retained and there would be a breezeway that would be connecting that building uh, with the new proposed uh, brewery and, and tasting room. Um, the overall site is a little over a half acre. Um, as you know, it's situated within the uh, industrial one zone as are all the properties along the easterly side of Degnan Boulevard, as well as the sites adjacent to the east across uh, the creek. 
Um, opposite the property to the to the west uh, is a residential zone, and that side of, of Degnan Boulevard is improved with single family uh, residences. Abutting the properties, um, as Mr. Di Nicola pointed out, to the north is a, a wholesale bait shop, as well as a, uh, a retail fish fish market. Um, to the south is a uh, is a boat yard and repair facility, and further south is a uh, boat brokerage operation and boat yard and, and repair facility. And across the creek is, um, again, our additional A1 zone properties, including uh, additional fish markets, as well as a clam bar and outdoor seating area um, as part of my investigation. I actually have a photo, um, as you can see, of the creek frontage. Uh, and just to back up, I know a question was raised about decking, and as you can see, uh, immediately to the east of, uh, in photo three, you can see the existing decking um, that is there along the creek and to the east of that building that will come down, and the proposal is again to have, to have decking, uh, as Mr. Dean Cole pointed out, um, for any uh, potential boaters that may pull up to the site. Um, so the new proposal, um, again, is to raise the, this existing roughly 5,000 square foot corrugated steel building and replace it with the new two-story building that would sit uh, roughly 78 feet further back from Degnan Boulevard. Uh, it'll contain a floor area for the brewery uh, portion of 1,654 square feet. And the tasting room uh, for the craft brews would be 837 square feet. Um, as pointed out by Mr. Di Nicola, the new tasting room would be 16.8% of the new uh, building area of the brewery building and 10% of the overall building area to include the existing two-story building and proposed um, uh, breezeway. Uh, parking will meet code, uh, 24.1 spaces are required and we're providing for 25 spaces. Um, presently, the site, as you can see in those photos, it's, it's devoid of any landscaping or screening whatsoever. And the proposal will be for uh, a percentage uh, of uh, landscaping of 28.9%, which um, is above the required 20%. And, and again, presently there's zero landscaping. So uh, it'll be a superior uh, landscape situation as opposed to what presently exist. Um, as part of my uh, due diligence in this application, I did research other um, uh, special permitted um, sites within the town of Islip of, of breweries with accessory um, tasting rooms within the I-1 district. Um, the noted um, brewery in West Islip is known as the Secretog Brewery Company. That was uh, granted a special permit for a tasting room that's located at 375 Union Boulevard in West Islip. Uh, the new brewery and tasting room are in, exist in an existing one-story commercial building in an I-1 zone. Um, the site is diagonally opposite uh, residentially zoned and uh, improved single-family residences to the southwest along the south side of Union Boulevard. Um, another uh, brewery that he investigated was Hopwins Brewery. That's at 1460 North Clinton Avenue in Bayshore. That's in an industrial area in an I-1 zone. It's in an that's it, it's at the uh, south end of an industrial building. Um, it was approved for a special permit for uh, a tasting room. Um, the site. Uh, the property itself backs to um, a residential zone and single family residences to the west on Lombardi Boulevard in Bayshore. And the last uh, brewery that I investigated was the Great South Bay Brewery. That's a 25 Drexel Drive in Bayshore. That, is, that was permitted for a tasting room uh, with an as of right brewery in an I-1 zone. Um, and that's in an existing industrial uh, building. Um, at this point, I'd like to just go through the special uh, exception criteria as uh, enumerated under 68-416 and 68417. Um, 
A, the use will not prevent the orderly and reasonable use of adjacent properties, of properties in adjacent use districts. Uh, the proposed accessory use of the tasting room is strictly um, for uh, tasting purposes, for sampling of craft beers, all within an enclosed space of the new building. There will be no outside consumption of alcohol. Um, B, the use uh, will not prevent the orderly and reasonable use of permitted or legally established uses in a district wherein the proposed use is to be located or of permitted or legally established uses within adjacent use districts. Uh, the proposed use, proposed accessory use is located within an industrial zone um, for, uh, with properties along Degnan Boulevard along the east side, all being uh, I-1 zone and with uses such as fish markets, boat yards, boat repair facilities, et cetera. And as I noted earlier, across the way of Orwak Creek uh, are additional A1 zone properties with uses that include other fish markets, as well as a clam bar with an outdoor uh, dining area. Uh, the safety, health, welfare, comfort, convenience, or, uh, or order of the town will not be adversely affected by the proposed use and its location. Again, the accessory use uh, of the tasting room will be totally self-contained and, and not in a traditional sense of bar, tavern, or nightclub, as Mr. Dina Cola pointed out earlier. Uh, D, the use will be in harmony and will promote the general purposes and intent of this ordinance. The accessory use is in, a, is in harmony with the intent and purpose of the standards required under the ordinance. And then under 68417, the special exception considerations, um, I'll go through the two that are pertinent to my testimony. A, the character of the existing and probable development of uses in the district and the peculiar suitability of such district for the location of any of such permissive uses. Well, the accessory use of the tasting room fits in with the mix of uses up and down the, the easterly side of Dagnan Boulevard and along the adjacent uses along the waterfront. The new building will be set back, as I noted, 78 feet from Degnan Boulevard, whereas the existing older uh, corrugated metal building is only three and a half feet uh, set back now, and it is an eyesore. Um, the site, as I noted, uh, is devoid presently of any landscaping. The new proposal is for a superior landscape plan, proposing for 28% of the total site landscaped with um, screening along the immediate area of, of Dagnan Boulevard. Um, and then uh, under B, the conservation of property values and the encouragement of the most appropriate uses of land. Um, property values will not be adversely impacted. In fact, this is gonna be a huge upgrade uh, with the redevelopment of the site as noted by the, the old tired state of, of the buildings that are on the site. Um, and considering the planned um, operations and safeguards that the new applicant um, proposes. So all in all, again, this is only a positive um, application in terms of the, the, uh, the streetscape up and down uh, Degnan Boulevard, and in terms of the, the overall uh, redevelopment of the site. And at this point, I can answer any questions if the board may have any. Before I go to questions, Ms. Dinicola, you're running close to your 30 minutes. Do you have others to present on this or are you wrapped up? Was that directed to me, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, Ms. Dinicola, yeah. Before we go to questions, I just want to leave you're approaching your 30 minute presentation time. I want to know if you have. No, uh, no that, uh, that concludes the applicant's presentation. Okay. And if the board has any questions, um, I do have the. Um, uh, 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 the Mr. Elwood, the um, who developed site plan. Um, I have Mr. Bula, who's the architect, and of course, Mr. Lynch, uh, if the board has any questions. Great. Well, just before we go to the public hearing portion of it, Mr. Lynch, I noticed you, the three breweries that you referenced. Now, yes. The one in West Islip you're not suggesting is in a similar location to the one that's being proposed on Degnan, are you? Well, I'm, I'm strictly noting that it's it's within obviously the I-1 zone as the subject is, and it is it's diagonally opposite residential development in a residential zone. Right. It's still diagonally developed. There's one house that's left on Union Boulevard. The rest are pretty much commercial properties, a shopping center, uh, a, what else is across the street that you're looking at? Basically shopping centers, one house, and then you're going into the fire department parking lot, and then you're going into uh, Brownstones, correct? 
Uh, so yeah, but are you talk, are you talking diagonally across the train the, tracks? Immediately opposite the property to, uh, to the diagonal southeast, uh, southwest, excuse me, is, is the uh, beginning of the residential zone and it is uh, residentially developed along that stretch of Union. Uh, residentially developed on Union? Yes, on the south side of Union are, are residences. Okay. Maybe to, the, was, to the southwest. I haven't been there a while. I think there was one house left there, but maybe there's more than one. And then going to Drexel, did you, is there any residences in that area that you used as a comparator? No, that area is, um, you'd have to go along the, the opposite side of Fifth Avenue for any residences. That's strictly uh, within an industrial park in an, a, in an I-1 zone. And then the one on North Clinton, are the residences on a street behind it or are they on the same street as the they, the, the residents immediately abut the site to the rear on Lombardi Boulevard. Lombardi, okay. And the brewery's on North Clinton. Pardon? And the brewery's, uh, the, on, North the brewery's on North Clinton, yes. And immediately abutting is the residential zone and residential development abutting to the to the west on Lombardi. Great. Boulevard. Thank you. Those are my questions. I just wanted to clarify just the, way the uh, comparators that you were using there in their locations. I'm going to go to public comment and then uh, we'll come back for questions from the board and then a uh, staff report as well. So first up, I have uh, Doris Kennedy. Ms. Kennedy, when you're ready, just unmute. You. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, go ahead. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for sharing all this information with us because a lot of us didn't receive any of this information since only the neighboring immediate properties received documents. Um, everything, yeah, you know, it sounds like a wonderful thing. While I would love the opportunity to be able to go meet with friends and walk home, there's too many cons that outweigh the, those pros. Um, you've talked about the industrial properties that are north and south, which maybe might be four or five properties, but you didn't talk about the 175 residential homes across the street from this proposed property. Um, in addition, um, I did notice that under adult uses, which is what the applicant filed under, it states that it shall not be located within a 500 foot radius of any area zone for residential use. Now, less than 50 feet across the street starts a 175 residential yeah. neighborhood. Um, you talk about it being a new business and not being a bar, being a tasting room. It is one of the newest, most trendiest things that is going on, tasting rooms. Um, you have brew tours going there. You have individuals going there. Every single tasting room is holding, while you say nothing outside, they hold special events or fundraisers for local organizations that all overflow into the parking lot. Um, that parking lot is only for 25 people. Um, once you add that food truck, you're going to lose some. While you have people standing around for the food truck, you're going to block additional spots. Parking's going to overflow out onto Degnum Boulevard. Um, people aren't going there for the food or the food truck. They're going there to consume alcohol. A 0 0.05 to 0 0.07 impairs your ability to drive. That's an average of two beers within an hour. People are going there. They're, yep, they're sampling small different cups. They're finding the ones they like, and then they're hanging out and drinking in larger quantities. This is a huge safety risk to our community. In the evenings, people are gonna be leaving. They're gonna be urinating in the street on the neighbor's yards that they're parked in front of. They'll be throwing up out in the street. You call it a family friendly place, but come on guys. I have been to breweries myself. I've been to wineries myself. I've dropped my adult kids there. The places are packed. I know what goes on. Music amplifies on the water. Boats are gonna be pulling up into those boating slips. What do people do when they pull up in a waterfront place? They sit on their boats, they drink, they play the music, okay? There's a breezeway there. We didn't address what the use of that breezeway is gonna be for. Um, I did, from people who had supposedly spoken with the people who own the property, um, that there was gonna be some picnic tables or benches out on that deck in that back area. Um, we didn't talk about any of the emissions from the brewing, um, the storage of the waste that att attracts rodents. I know um, Great South Bay Brewery had an issue where um, their hops were being complained by, 
people in the neighbors who are complaining about that from where they were dropping it off. Ms. Kennedy, I'm just gonna ask you to wrap up. You're at your three minutes, but please finish up. Thank you. Okay, so um, bottom line, I believe it would be a beautiful facility the way you're talking about it, but the potential ramifications to the neighborhood are life altering for us as homeowners. Kids walking in the street, people walking their dogs. There's a senior complex diagonally across from there that there's people out walking constantly. The parking is going to block visibility. This is a transient business. People aren't staying there all day. It's gonna be a rotating door of drinkers in and out. I'm sorry, I have to ask that you don't approve this special permit. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna to go to Lark Schlinbaum. There we go. Uh, we can hear you. Go right ahead. Oh, okay, good. Uh, well, Doris really pretty much said the things that I was concerned about also. It's, uh, there's a, a residential community uh, to the west, and it's actually a little bit larger. It's 189 single-family dwellings, uh, 74 apartments, and if this place is as successful as um, I hope it could be, uh, but that is going to be very bad for the neighborhood because the overflow is going to be out into the residential neighborhood. Um, I have a question of there is a plan if 50 or 100 people show up uh, to occupy the 22 seats, uh, what, what would the plan be to remove those people, um, discourage them from coming, um, it just doesn't seem like a good idea contiguous to a residential neighborhood. I know it's especially permitted use in an industrial one zone, um, but this industrial one zone is pretty unique because it's across the street from this beautiful residential neighborhood. I also wrote a letter with other concerns and um, thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Let me go to, is it Beth Gerisi? When you're ready, just unmute, you can go ahead and speak. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to uh, express our opposition to the idea of the brewery. Um, we're also in favor of new businesses, but uh, this is a residential neighborhood. Uh, and we just got the hours of proposed operation every day, every day, Monday to Thursday, 12 to 9 p.m. There's children that have to go to sleep at night to get up in the morning to go to school, people that have to get rest at night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday till 12 p.m. at night. That's, that's just incomprehensible in a residential neighborhood. Um, I'm also concerned about uh, Mr. Denicola saying that there's no, not going to be any hard liquor, but then he said, quote, perhaps in the future. So this is, you know, there's not gonna be anything outside uh, now, but uh, there has already been concerns voiced about overflow of capacity guests that arrive. That street, uh, our street Dagnon cannot be compared with the uh, white cap fish market. That is not in a residential neighborhood. That is separated by the canal from uh, Dagnon and the residential neighborhood. So that's, you, you can't compare those two. And um, I know uh, Doris touched on it, but because we live on Maller, but right next to Dagnon, we see people and kids walking, riding bikes up and down Dagnon, all the time, every day. Sometimes kids are coming home a little bit later if it's after a sporting event and, and they're going to be open until 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday and Friday, Saturday and Sunday until 12 p.m. We just, we can't have that in our residential neighborhood. Oh, and there was one other question that we had. Um, the setback on the building plans, the site, um, the new building is, uh, in it's in park. violation of the code. And although the existing building is at the same setback, we were wondering if that was maybe grandfathered in, but wouldn't new construction have to uh, abide by the code? 
And also speaking about code, I'm just curious if the town code permits the uh, issuance of a special permit if it's parceled in a residential neighborhood. And even though it's titled as for a bar, tavern, or nightclub, uh, that's the special permit that's being sought. So I think that really needs to be looked at more carefully. And especially going back, just one more thing, and then I'll close. But with Mr. Denicola's statement about how, quote unquote, perhaps in the future, aside from the fact that it has no place in a residential neighborhood to begin with, the fact that it's fluid and what possibly might evolve in the future is just not acceptable and terribly concerning for our community. Thank you for your time. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. I'm gonna to go to Edward Newman. Mr. Newman, you're ready, just unmute, you can go ahead and speak. Yes, sir, thank you. Go right ahead. Uh, good evening, uh, members of the board. Um, so, I'm actually in, uh, in favor of this. I think it's nice to see a, uh, another family owned uh, local business who's trying to redevelop what's currently an eyesore property. Um, I think we do have to uh, address the issue that it is adjacent to a residential, but it is an I-1 zone with a number of heavy industrial uses currently in it, the boat yard and such. Uh, I live on Allen Point Road, by the way, so that's the residential uh, block immediately to the south of the property. Um, and um, I think my big concerns on it were kind of the parking, which seems to have been addressed, uh, any potential outdoor use or music. Um, so I would uh, ask that the uh, conditions for the special use permit uh, um, contain no amplified music. I think that's been addressed already. Um, no outdoor um, use uh, or events. Again, I think that's been addressed already. I'm a little concerned about the, the food truck and the parking in it, since the parking is a uh, concern. Um, and my only other suggestion would really be that um, we put a 10 p.m. cap uh, on it uh, for all days uh, instead of the 11, which I guess would apply to, what was it, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, I think 10 p.m. would be a little more appropriate for the residential area. Um, you know, we also did uh, have some mention of white cap. Um, I mean, white cap is visible from my yard uh, up the canal there that does have boat slips, that does have outdoor dining, that does have, uh, I believe, a liquor license. Uh, 99% sure on that. Um, and again, we haven't seen that as a major disruptor uh, in the neighborhood or, or seeing massive attendance. Uh, so in general, I would, I would support the, the project as proposed um, with the only additional restriction being the 10, 10 p.m. Thank you. I'm gonna to go to Jennifer Artera. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go right ahead. Okay, thank you very much for listening to us. Um, I'd like to start with, um, I appreciate what Ed Newman had to say, but I also believe that Ed Newman sold his house and is moving out of the neighborhood. Um, for me, you can wrap this up however you want. Beer is alcohol, wine is alcohol, and people get drunk from alcohol. I have been to breweries myself. I've witnessed people that get there in these tasting rooms, they're intoxicated. I have even witnessed people smoking and vaping marijuana on the premises of such breweries. My biggest problem aside from the traffic is that I'm a mother of children. My children are old enough to be independent, to walk to school, walk home from school, skateboard, ride their bicycles. What do I do now as a parent when I have to deal with the hours of 12 to 9 p.m. during the day, during the week, and 12 to 11 on the weekends that I basically will have to, I guess, remove my kids from having that freedom because I have to worry about the increased probability of intoxicated drivers, um, the increased probability of a negative encounter with an intoxicated person. For me, this is a safety issue. This is a residential neighborhood. And for my children, I don't want to be the mother that has Suffolk County P my door to tell me that my kid was hit by a drunk driver. I'm sorry. And I don't also want to be in the situation where I have to make my kids prisoners in their own residential neighborhood because I won't be able to allow my son to walk to school or my daughter or ride their bicycles anymore or skateboard because I will have to be in fear that this is what's in my neighborhood now. Um, so for me, 
you can call it a tasting room. It's another name for a bar. And I just really believe that the safety in a, in a residential area is for me, I have other issues too with the music and the traffic and all that. But for me, it boils down to the safety and the safety of these residents and especially the children. Thank you so much. Thank you. We go to Linda Moreno. Ms. Moreno, if you unmute, you can go ahead and speak. Hello? We can hear you, go ahead. Okay. Um, basically, everybody's expressed the same concerns that I have. I live on Kempster Avenue, which faces where the brewery will be. We already have issues with JNR and the fish market. They use Kempster Avenue to cut across when they want to head west to go on to Main Street because it's difficult to make the left-hand turn to go west. So we get a lot of traffic already. We have many children on the block. And as the woman who just previously spoke, our children will no longer be able to play roller hockey in the street. They will no longer be able to skateboard, walk home from school safely. This is not acceptable. We also have a senior community, uh, which they felt that, you know, they didn't even know how to get onto Zoom, how to express how they were feeling. And they're extremely upset because many of them have dogs. They like to take walks in the evening, during the morning hours, you know, and, and now this is all, the quality of life is going to be greatly impacted in a negative way. This is not acceptable. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Ferrigno. And for Michael Ferrigno, I don't think he's in the room yet to speak. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. He says that he said to skip him. His, um, uh, oh. He can't unmute himself. Okay. So we'll go to Nancy Keller de Croteau. Hi, good evening. Uh, thank you for letting me join this meeting. Um, I am one of the seniors that live directly across from where this uh, brewery is proposed to be built. Um, that brewery will impact our senior lives here in a very horrific way. The site is from my bedroom window is probably less than 50 feet. And none of the traffic that that's gonna go down into the 25 spaces that they say, um, I've lived across from that site for 22 years. And there's no way that that could be hold 25 spaces and all the other stuff that they said they're going to put on that property, the landscaping, the food truck, the, um, that's an impossibility. Um, the traffic will be so horrific from them trying to get out and coming up past the seniors where we live that it is very difficult during daytime hours. Uh, you have trucks that are delivering from for the seafood or into Dean's Market. Uh, 
If they block the entrances to the senior complex, it is very difficult for those seniors to navigate, to get out into the street, to make a, a left-hand turn. Um, having all that traffic in front of our residents and having this go on until midnight is gonna be very horrific for all of us. And most of the seniors are in uproar that they feel they're gonna be displaced from their homes, that they've been there for many of years um, because they will not be able to have a quality of life um, if this proposal goes through. And I would say that I think this, you know, the town needs to really think very hard about the impact that this is going to have for everyone, not just the profits and not just what um, the uh, people that are going to own the buildings and profit off of the people that are coming there to drink and the town making money off the taxes. It's the people's lives that live here on a daily basis that are going to be putting up with this nonsense 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Because as much as they say from, from this time to this time, you're going to have people there brewing stuff. You're going to have trucks there making deliveries. And I don't care what they say that it's only going to happen at a certain time. We've heard that all before. And we're dealing with that right now with the seafood, uh, the trucks coming in here at two o'clock in the morning, waking people up. The Helen, I'm just going to ask you to, to start wrapping up if you don't mind at three or three minutes, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, I just appreciate that the, the board take the time to think about the impact on us people. And thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm going to go to Sarah Jane Lowe. Hi there. Hello, go ahead. Thanks for letting me speak. Um, so I just want to say thank you. I emailed over about 12 questions, um, and all of them I think were addressed. Um, except for the two that were for the town of Islip. Uh, I live at 20 Degnan. So as you can imagine, uh, very close space across the street diagonally. Um, we're not strictly opposed to the idea of the brewery. Um, you know, the lot as it is, is an eyesore. Um, the few things I guess I just wanna echo are concerns about the food truck and parking. Um, you know, potential rodent issues with trash, outdoor events, um, and how that would impact parking um, and loud music. Uh, one thing that came up that I thought was a really good point was the fact that people do like brewery tours with buses. Um, so I would request like a strict, a strict ban on buses because I don't know, like that would definitely be an impact. Um, but most of my questions um, were addressed and concerns. Uh, the two that I had for the town of Islip is just a, um, I guess a repeated request that the town invest in the area. I mean, with foot traffic, um, you know, hopefully that will increase people, I would hope would maybe walk to the bar, but we've been asking for sidewalks since we moved in four plus years ago. Um, we haven't, had those. Um, same with curbs, people park up along my grass all the time. So I know that with a business across the street, there's going to be parking nearby on occasion at least. Um, so I guess those are really the big concerns. Um, you know, and I respect everyone else in the neighborhood, their concerns about families and kids and, um, you know, the seniors who are walking their dogs. But I, I think some actual sidewalks in the neighborhood would maybe alleviate a lot of these concerns. Thank you. Thanks. 
I'm going to go to Michael Fleming. So Fleming, you're in the room. If you want to unmute, you can go ahead and speak. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, um, just one point I wanted to make out, comparing the brewery on uh, North Clinton Avenue. Although it does abut Lombardi Boulevard, there is no access to Lombardi Boulevard from Clinton Avenue. Uh, I know that because uh, that's the street I grew up on. Uh, Lombardi Boulevard is a dead-end street. Uh, none of the patrons from that brewery ever come in contact with Lombardi Boulevard. So um, it's not a it's not a good comparison. And as you previously stated, uh, the Secretary Brewery, there is one remaining house on Union Boulevard, and that is it. Uh, it's not anything on Union Boulevard. Nothing like the situation in Degnan, uh, other than that neighborhood for 22 years. I've kept my boat in that neighborhood for close to 50 years. Um, the existing businesses that are there at five o'clock, they go home. I believe Whitecap is open the latest. I believe they close at 8 p.m. That happens to be in my backyard. You never hear a peep out of them. Um, the brewery portion of this business is definitely uh, allowed in an industrial zone. Um, I'm not opposed to the improvement of the property, but I am opposed to the additional traffic. Uh, we have enough problems with people thinking Degnan Boulevard is a speedway now. Uh, adding alcohol to that uh, will not improve that situation. And uh, I thank you for your time. Uh, hello, Tim, I haven't seen you in a while. How are you doing? And um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fleming. Uh, is there anybody else who wishes to be heard on this application that did not sign up? If you are here and would like to speak, I have nobody else left, please uh, raise your hand on the screen. If you're on the phone and you'd like to speak, please hit star nine on your phone now. Um, we'll let anybody else who'd like to speak on this be heard now. I'm not seeing any hands go up, so what I'm gonna do is go to Ms. Wozniak to give us a report, and then we'll uh, come back for questions. Good evening, Ms. Wozniak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I How might be a little bit repetitive, but um, the subject property is located on the east side of Dagnam Boulevard, approximately 650 feet south of Montauk Highway in Bayshore, and it's located in an industrial pocket adjacent to single family zoning on the west side of Dagnam. The applicant is looking to demolish the northernmost building on site and construct a new two story building with a microbrewery and tasting room on the first floor and storage space on the second floor. The existing two-story building is going to be utilized for office and storage space. A brewery operation is a permitted use in the industrial one district, but the tasting room component triggers the requirement for the special permit. The tasting room will be 837 square feet with 22 seats. In addition, the applicant is also requesting several site plan modifications, including a 66% front yard landscaping relaxation, permission to install an overhead door facing the street and minor parking relaxation. Um, as some of the proposed stalls that they showed on their site plan actually don't work. So they'd have to be removed or relocated. Um, planning does have some concerns regarding the location of the brewery across from single family dwellings as breweries can attract a lot of patrons, can be noisy and may host events with food trucks. Uh, breweries have become more popular in recent years and tend to attract a decent amount of people, which could increase traffic up and down Dagnon Boulevard, increase late night and weekend activity across from residences, and possibly produce on-street parking if or when the parking lot is full. There's also some concern regarding a proposed rear deck um, that has overhead doors attached to the tasting room, which would encourage customers to, dr to drink and convene outside while outdoor seating is not permitted in the industrial one district and the applicant is not showing outdoor seats, the layout of the deck and tasting room with the overhead doors creates an indoor outdoor space, 
which lends itself to bringing the use outdoors, creating a potential noise issue for neighbors, especially when there is live music and creates more space for additional customers to congregate. Um, there may also be some issues regarding adequate drainage and grading as the applicant is proposing an approximate five foot grade change from the street level and significant amount of fill within a floodplain. Um, planning does recommend the board reserve decision tonight in order to address the comments and concern heard tonight. Thank you, Ms. Wozniak. So Ms. Dina Kohler or uh, Mr. Lynch, I, I still have question for you as it relates to finding a comparator in a similar zone within the town of Islip where one has been granted. I really think the three that you've referenced uh, for obvious reasons are not similar in nature to what is being proposed on Degnan Boulevard in a residential area right across the street from a residential area. And I'd like the three that you proposed are uh, much different. Uh, the three that you cited were much different. Union Boulevard again is not really a residential street in that area. There's, I believe, one house. There may be a second house left, but there's not much left there. Uh, the other one in Bayshore, uh, there are no houses near. And then the one on North Clinton, as was stated earlier uh, by one of the members of the community, there are no houses on North Clinton across from it. These are houses around the back on, on a different street. So I would just ask, uh, as part of this, that if you could find some other comparators that are, in fact, in a similar situation. Could I, could I just comment, Mr. Chairman, Absolutely. on that? Again, yes. as, you, as, as you know, this is a relatively new phenomenon, these tasting rooms. So uh, the most recent of which I believe is only maybe th two to three years old. Um, those are the three that I know of that were granted special permits. So again, being a relatively new phenomenon, and I'm, I'm really looking to point out that the others were all zone A1, of course, where uh, breweries are permitted use. And just to back up, I know some of the residents are concerned about the brewery. And again, that's that's a permitted use. Um, the, the purpose of the of the special permit is for the accessory tasting room. But back to those other examples, again, those are the only three that I know of that have been approved for special permit. And it's a relatively new phenomenon. And I did point out that while there is no access to Lombardi Boulevard, the fact is that those rear yards of those houses back up to the to the uh, industrial building where the tasting room and the brewery is so they're it's it's abutting that while there's no access if there's a if there's a negative perception as to the existence of a of a negative uh of a tasting room again you have backyards that are immediately abutting up to uh an industrial one zone and a tasting room and the brewery so i merely wanted to point out what the the surrounding areas and those are the three only sites that I know of within the town of Islip that were granted special permits. So um, again, I'm merely pointing out the immediate characteristics and the two are within proximity to residential zoned uh, properties. Thank you, Ms. Lynch. Your comments are duly noted. I just don't agree with the, uh, the analysis that you've made there. Um, question for you. Uh... Uh, Ms. Dina Cole, can you speak to um, that Ms. Wozniak talked about? I know you said you have enough landscaping, but the front yard landscaping is insufficient. And I take it the front yard is where across the street from the residences? You're muted, Ms. Dina Cole. Uh, right now, there's absolutely no uh, landscaping, as I'm sure you've seen the uh, photo, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> the applicant obviously uh, is far in excess of the 20% requirement for the overall site. Uh, and we are trying to create a screening uh, across the front uh, with the area that we have. It's, it's roughly a, a thousand square feet, 995 square feet of, of area. Yes, it is a, um, it is a, um, uh, it'll be a reduction, a request and a reduction of the percentage requirement, uh, but it, it's gonna be a vast improvement and uh, the applicant will, uh, uh, to use the words of uh, the planning department, they will plant a superior, um, uh, do a superior landscaping in that area uh, to create as much a screen from the parking area as is possible. Uh, in order, we, we moved the building back 78 feet, so it's closer to the canal, almost uh, in, in, with the same setback. Uh, from uh, uh, from the canal from Morrowa Canal, 
uh, Aurora Creek, I'm sorry. Uh, so we have the um, frontage for the parking, create the parking, and uh, uh, that will be a, a variance. So there'll be four variances uh, or relaxations uh, that I'm aware of, unless Ms. Wozniak can uh, tell me more. Two, uh, one, of course, is the existing building, the, the building on the south. That's 7.1 feet from the canal, but that's existing. It has a CO. The new building will be approximately eight feet uh, from the uh, from Arawa Creek, uh, again, to give it as much setback from uh, Degnan Boulevard as, as, as possible. Um, and, um, uh, of course, the, the amount of parking spaces is the amount required uh, uh, pursuant to the um, uh, zoning code. Uh, but the, uh, so there'll be the uh, setback from the, from uh, Arawa Creek for the building to be erected. There will be the um, front yard landscape relaxation, which is planning board relaxation. Uh, there'll be a, um, um, a fill variance, um, which uh, I'll let Mr. L would explain uh, in, in, in flood zones. He's the engineer, uh, but other than that, the, the site uh, will meet, uh, again, to the best of my um, knowledge, uh, all requirements of the uh, zoning code. Ms. Wozniak also raised the uh, overhead doors, in, I guess one in the front, and then the, also the ones in the back onto the deck. Can you speak well, to those? The overhead doors are to the brewery, because that the overhead doors on the side of the brewery in the front. We can make it a very attractive door to make it look like uh, uh, a, um, you know, uh, something fancy and not just an overhead door. Um, the overhead door in the back, uh, again, that's for the brewery. It's not for the tasting room to have access to a deck. As I indicated, the applicant is not going to have outdoor events. The applicant cannot have uh, outdoor seating because it is not permitted in the code. And we can sign a covenant restriction to that. I'm sure planning will have uh, uh, enough restrictions uh, to uh, 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 to covenant and record against the property. And Mr. Dinicolo, can you clarify one thing? I believe Mr. Jericia raised the question of, you had said uh, no hard liquor or perhaps in the future. I just want to no, get clarity from you on that. I, I did not, uh, let me clarify that. Yeah. I did not, there will be no hard liquor ever. In the future, I, I indicated perhaps in the future, maybe New York State wines would be a, you know, a, a, a serve. No hard liquor. You get a beer and wine uh, a license from the New York State Liquor Authority, plus the brewery is controlled by the New York State Liquor Authority, as is the tasting room. Uh, as far as the hours of operation, someone said midnight, no, 11 o'clock will be the latest on the weekend. And as far as music, no outside music, no, uh, no amplified music, no outside speakers. Um, and uh, I mean, they have limited hours. Uh, you know, you're over at 11 o'clock. Actually, you stop serving earlier, so you can close at 11 o'clock. Because this is also going to be under supervision of the New York State Liquor Authority, not only the town of Iceland. And I'm sure if it goes on past 11, the town will be getting quite a, quite a few calls, which which. Is fine because we are agreeing to close Friday, Saturday, Sunday, eleven o'clock, and uh, the other uh, evenings I, I believe nine o'clock. So, um, as far as parking on site, we we meet the parking code. Uh, we're not going to have one hundred and fifty people coming uh, with parking all over. It, it, it's an eight hundred square foot, a little eight hundred and thirty six square foot facility, uh, and that includes the, the 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 restrooms, the ladies' room, and the men's room. So you're not going to, you know, it just cannot can accommodate that type of traffic or crowd. Uh, Ms. Dinicola, some of the questions that come up related to waste and rodents, do you want to speak about uh, any of those issues related to a brewery? Well, I, I'm sure, yeah. Well, they use the grains, but the grains will be, um, uh, grains when they do the brewing, and uh, uh, they will be in, in, in sealed containers. Uh, we don't want to have rodents, uh, that's for sure. Uh, and uh, so that will be um, something that is, uh, you know, very important to the operation, to the reputation uh, of of the of the brewery. Uh, rodents cannot be tolerated, and that will be addressed. And and the the um, the waste is removed promptly 
and I believe they have special containers for it. Uh, I, I could supply that information uh, with planning, Mr. Chairman. But obviously, rodents and vermin are, are not a tolerable thing for this use. Thank you. It'd be great if you do that. Uh, Mr. Limbaum also asked a question, and you know, when I go out east to a winery or something, it may hold 30 people or 40 people, but there may not be space at the counter or at a table, but people tend to wait around for space to open up. Um, obviously, that has an impact on parking. What, what is the plan or how would you deal with the issue of, you know, 50 people showing up when you only have 22 seats and people are waiting for the next table to open up or waiting for a seat at the bar to open up or have tasted their beer and now grab their beer and want to stand inside the establishment versus sit at a table? Well, uh, you know, the, the anticipation of that type of, uh, of, of, that type of a crowd, um, we would have to have uh, uh, someone uh, designated to um, tell people it, it were full and you cannot, uh, you know, we cannot, uh, you cannot enter the premises. Uh, we do have a fire code that limits occupancy, uh, but um, I believe the applicant would certainly consider um, having a um, designated person uh, if, if it ever develops to such an extent uh, outside to direct traffic away and to indicate that there is no further space uh, in, in the premises. Uh, thank them for coming, but unfortunately, you, you will not be able to enter. It's, it's going to be a controlled situation, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for that. Uh, I'll, I'll note at wineries and some of the other breweries I've been to both that, uh, you know, the, the capacity limits often are exceeded because people tend to do wait around once they drive somewhere and don't want to uh, leave and come back. Ms. Wozniak, can you answer the question? I believe it was Mr. Reese again who asked whether or not the new building would be in violation of the setback code. I believe they have a rear yard setback issue to the creek because technically that's their rear yard. So they need 25 feet and I think it's eight feet possibly. About eight feet, yes. So there is a... Which is okay. the existing setback of the, which is the existing setback for the existing building that's going to be demolished. Right. So, but the new building that's going up, you're going to have the same setback issue? Uh, yes. The new building up with the same setback. All right, I have, I know uh, Mr. Brown had questions, I think other board members do, but we had one speaker who did not get in in time. So I'm going to have Mr. Faraday, who's right across the street, speak for three, up to three minutes, and then we'll go back to uh, Mr. Brown and then Mr. Mattermore. Uh, so we could bring Mr. Faraday in. Mr. Faraday, just unmute, you can go ahead and speak. Hello. Hear you now. Hello. We can hear you. Go right ahead. Hi, my name is Dennis Faraday. I'm the president of Anchor Homes, which owns a senior citizen complex within 300 feet of this uh, proposed applicant. Um, there are 30 senior citizen apartments there, 60, around 60 uh, tenants who all walk the neighborhood, uh, do their strolls, and the residents are believe that this is totally out of character. Most of them, or all of them, are, are uh, of age where they're not familiar with the computer or Zoom, so they couldn't get in on, on this. I had a hard time getting in on it, too. The, I know they submitted an application, I mean, a petition to the town planning department with signatures from all the tenants opposing this application. Um, they have a, a real problem with the quality of life will definitely be affected with this application. And they've telling me, well, if the bar goes there, or they call a bar, tap room, whatever you want to call it, they're moving. So that affects now me with a senior city unit where we're trying to put seniors in housing and we have something that's going to be in the neighborhood that's going to force them out. And I do have one other question that two of the tenants in my complex brought to my attention just today that over the past couple of weekends, they've been using that as a bar and had music playing on the weekends. Is there any truth to that? Or can somebody answer that? That they're doing this without permission already? Well, we'll so, seek an answer for that, Mr. Faraday. We'll go ahead with okay, so I'm totally opposed and the tenants in the um, apartment complex are totally opposed to this application in its entirety. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go to Mr. Brown. And Ms. Dina Cole, whenever you got a chance, I don't know if you were the uh, 
proprietor would like to speak to the uh, question of whether or not it's being currently used or has been used in the last uh, several weeks or no, at all not. serving and having people. Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. It's I've looked at it several times uh, as late as today, and it's it's a vacant, to the best of my knowledge, the Nordley building is vacant. Uh, the um, Southerly building uh, has has someone in there, but it has not been used as a bar, not at all. Uh, and if it has been, I will I will absolutely advise Miss Wasnick. But my my inspections have indicated nothing of that nature at all. Thank you, Mr. Brown. You're muted, Mr. Brown. Okay, Mr. Chairman, you can hear me now. Uh, my, my first question is going to be to Sean, actually, or Miss um, Wozniak. The other breweries that were mentioned as samples, did, what capacities do they have? It, if, you, if we could look that up. I could look them up. I don't have the capacities, though, for you, but I can definitely get you that information. If you could, while I ask a couple other questions, maybe we could look that up. All, all right. Um, Mr. Dina Kohler, the parking, um, we have... 26 spaces, we needed 28, which is not a terrible relaxation. But my question is, how many employees do you have? Okay, first off, we meet parking, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Brown, um, where we are required to have 25 and we're providing 25. Okay. Um, what was the second part of the question? Oh, how many employees, employees do you have? As I indicated in my presentation, uh, three, three uh, brewers, uh, there is a master brewer and two other brewers, but only two of the brewers are on site at any given time. But there are three employees who are designated as brewers. Uh, in the tasting room, uh, there is um, during peak hours, and I can tell you the peak hours if you want, there are uh, three servers and one manager. So that, that's the number of employees that are on site. So that would be a total of seven, if my math is correct. Uh, um, no, it, it would be uh, four and two with six. Ms. Nicole, what about the entertainment? How do they get there? And that is, uh, all right, uh, that's uh, Friday and Saturday. Uh, a, a guitar player, um, uh, maybe a keyboard player, not all, all at the same time. This is not a band. This is just someone strumming and singing, as I am advised, uh, and or a bass fiddle. So it could be conceivably two musicians and there's a possibility that you might need some crowd control if people because no. i've gone to the other tasting rooms um in west islip i went to the one in uh, bayshore and there was another one up in bohemia too um in an industrial area and that they tend to have larger crowds than 20 people by far the one when i've been there um that's why i want to know what the capacities of the other ones are because i think at, at 22 tables i think it might uh, present itself with a problem um, with uh, people trying to come. You, it's a place on the water. People love to sit on the water and um, stand on the water and have a drink in the summertime. And I think it would be opening up to something where we couldn't um, service the people. We'd be turning away people and it, they'd be on Degron driving up and down, uh, trying to Get, get spots and to get in. I, I think it would create a, a little bit of a problem. Um, I have a concern about the landscaping, which I is if what I read today this is correct. It was sixty six percent relaxation. Um, I know there's absolutely nothing up front there when I drove by today. So if you put a pine tree in, it would be an improvement. But to screen off uh, from the residential neighborhood, we, you know, we, we'd need some substantial. Um, buffer there. Uh, do we know what the um, garage store in the back of the brewery in the back, what that would be used for? Uh, that would be used for access uh, to the brewery uh, to bring in or, or um, uh, deliver a product. Uh, I would believe, would believe that uh, uh, I believe that's what it would be for. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, Mr. Buhler would be able to answer that question uh, uh, since he uh, drafted the uh, site plan. If you'll notice on the site plan, uh, the garage doors, I guess, facing 
No, I can't tell from this plan. Um, uh, uh, James, uh, would you be able to answer this question? Jim Bula, you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Um, I mean, basically in a microbrewery, you need to have different uh, things that you store. You need to store grain um, and all components of the brewing system. So that would be storage for the brewing itself. So, you know, we, we need a place that's on the same level as the brewery. So the material would be, would be you know, transported to the brewing area from that storage room. Okay, so it's a storage room that you need the garage door for in the back. Right. Okay. Um, I Just for the record, I'm 100% in favor of the uh, brewery. Um, I don't like the idea of the tasting room. I think that it's too small uh, for the property. Uh, and what I mean by too small, it's too small to handle what I believe would be the capacity of crowd that would be coming. And I think that would overwhelm uh, the area. There is like uh, the one gentleman that spoke last, I did see that apartment complex across the way. Um, there's also a trailer park caddy corner across the canal, which I believe one of the uh, uh, earlier gentlemen spoke about too. And um, if you have boats coming up, I think there's gonna be a lot of people congregating on it that because I don't know where else they would go if you only have 22 seats. So that's the uh, points that I wanted to make, Mr. Chairman. And um, Kevin, Sean did look up those breweries, the capacity limits. So um, the one on North Clinton was limited to 20 seats at 1,700 square feet. Um, Secatog, which is West Sislip, was 52 seats, uh, 2,050 square feet. And then Great South Bay didn't have limits on seating, but was limited to 4,400 square feet. Yeah, because they had some crowds when I was there. So, okay. Mr. Mr. Thank you. Unmute, Mr. Manamore. You can go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I was struck uh, as very uh, clear and concise, uh, Kelly Wozniak's uh, staff report that. Uh, I think it's opened our eyes to both the pros and the cons. There's a few things, though, that I think need somewhat uh, some clarification. It, it's it's really unfair to say this is a residential area completely. Uh, when I was about six years old to eight years old, we used to go to Sunrise Fish on Degnan Boulevard at least once a week. Those buildings have been there. And that whole area for the fishing industry has been there for well before the houses, most of those houses were built. Not true, some of the, the big older ones uh, down on the, uh, some of the spots on Saxon. But just for clarification purposes, to say the whole thing is residential is not quite accurate. I was at the hearing for the senior citizen and there was a major debate about those senior citizens going in because of the noise generated by the fishing industry. Now, uh, and that's not to say that I, I disagree with the points made by the uh, homeowners and the parents, particularly in the concern for children and the concern for uh, traffic and safety problems. I think those are all have to be looked at. And that's what Mr. Wisniak had said is, is, is we have some investigation to do it's a major investigation, and particularly it's with regard to the tasting room. It isn't with regard to the brewery or the manufacturer of beer there. It's with regard to that. And it's, I thought it was uh, clearly well stated by the neighbors and fairly stated by the neighbors that that is their concern, uh, except perhaps for Lark Schlimbaum, who is a professional in this industry and knows uh, how this system works day to day and what covenants and restrictions are, I'm sure the neighbor's feeling is, oh, this is a disaster, the world's coming to an end and it can't be controlled. That's not quite accurate sometimes. Sometimes it might be, but that's what we have to research and look carefully at. What, what strikes me is on the one hand, we get a majorly improved site, which is 80 years old, no landscaping, 
I saw, yeah, we, we would get that, but what are we going to do about the safety issues that were brought up by the mother with the children down the block and the concern for traffic and the concern for things getting out of hand. So, and I think the answer to that is that's what uh, the planning staff have recommended. Those things have to be uh, fleshed out, researched. I, I'm very concerned about the doorway going out to the canal, as uh, Mr. Brown just mentioned, I think, or one of the gentlemen, uh, one of my contemporaries uh, mentioned is across that parking lot is, I think it's 30, but it may be more than that, uh, trailer homes. And there's nothing to block the sound from that location across the parking lot, because there's very few cars ever in that parking lot. I'm there all the time. I've represented people in all three of these, build, oh, the two buildings on site. Uh, I'm down there all the time. And much of what has been discussed it has to be uh, controlled or regulated in, in such a fashion so as to satisfy the concern, many of the concerns that have been uh, raised. Um, the whole, uh, the interesting thing about the whole thing is it's a new concept. Uh, it dawns on me that as there are more and more of them, it will be less of a new concept. And some of the, uh, you know, we're going through uh, a period where there are, uh, Mr. Madam, I'm just going to ask if you have any questions for the applicant on. Uh, well, I think I think not other than to say uh, I'm in favor of Ms. Uh, Wozniak's uh, recommendation that we have a chance to vet this uh, on both sides and then uh, listen to what recommendation the planning staff may come up with. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Madam. Mr. Bruno. Yeah. Uh, first, I just I just have to say, with all due respect to Mr. Di Nicola, I don't see how the deck can be considered part of the brewery when, in fact, the only way to get out to the deck is through the overhead doors through the tasting room. So I'm sorry, Mr. Di Nicola, with all due respect, I, I cannot consider that deck part of the brewery. My first question is actually from Ms. Wozniak. Did it, uh, Ms. Wozniak, uh, Kelly, has the parking count been officially changed to one to a thousand for warehouse? Yes, um, okay. in our code it has, but I did want to mention, like I mentioned in my staff report, I know at least four of the stalls that are shown on their current plan right well, now, um, engineering would not be okay with. So although they are meeting parking that's shown, I don't know if they're going to meet well, parking once. I, I'm, I'm not so sure they are meeting parking. First of all, I would like to say that in general, storage areas are not the same as warehouse. And for example, if I have a stationary store in a shopping center, that whole stationary store is counted at one per 150, which is, which is the retail uh, or one to 200. But if it's an office, no matter whether I separate that storage or not, it's considered all of the same use, which brings me to where I'm going with this. First of all, I'd also like to know, Ms. Wasner, can you tell me why the brewing processing floor has no stalls? It is uh, 1,654 square feet and has no parking required to it? Yeah, I actually, I added that to my calculation um, in the report. Yeah, I mean, you, there, I mean there's, there's no free space. Yeah, but that would only add an additional, I think it was 1.4 spots, which would bring them to 26 required. Well, I think there's a bunch of things going on here. I think when you start going through this parking count with a little bit finer tooth comb, you're going to find that a lot of the things where they've used to one to a thousand may not be appropriate. There's nothing in the brewery area. And that brings me to my next point, which has to do with everything that is labeled storage. And I have never seen so much storage in a little building in all my life. Will somebody first, Mr. Di Nicola, can you tell me you're building a new building? The entire second floor is storage, though the entire first floor of the existing building is storage. The area that's behind the bathroom, the mechanical room is labeled as storage, which frankly, I can't imagine how, because with a double door on it and two windows, I don't see how, and a, uh, a door at the other end, and you have to get into the mechanical room, I personally can't see how you can store anything in there. But can you tell me what second floor storage is? Because that's another 2,500 square feet. What gets stored up there? It's storage on the plan. I don't know what's stored there, but it will be storage, uh, Mr. Bruno. Well, I'm going to tell you why I'm questioning it. 
Because what's also interesting to me is that the elevator, which is quite oversized, it is bigger than the bathrooms. It is about the size of, the, of an elevator used it's about, it appears to be, I would guess eight foot square, which is about the size of an elevator used in a hospital. It's by the area off the tasting room. Now, one would think that if storage was gonna go upstairs and the elevator was used for that purpose, one would think it would open to the back brewery area where you're bringing in those supplies. So I'm trying, I'm saying that I'm having difficulty with all of this, I'm finding that there's, there seems to be a lot of inconsistency for me for the number of storage, the size of the elevator, the way it's done, the parking count related to the storage. Uh, if you want to address any of those issues, I'll be happy to hear them, but I'm saying that they don't lead me to believe that it, it, it seems inconsistent here. It seems that a lot of things have been backed into to get to the number you're at. And uh, I have a lot of concern about that. Bottom line is, I think the parking is nowhere near is going to is nowhere near going to be appropriate for what you're doing, and that uh, a lot of it's been masked in the way things have. I just want to to your comments, Mr. Bruno. I mean, your your assumptions are uh, assumptions of mistrust. Um, perhaps I can have an architect explain to you, an architect, why they need the storage and why the elevator is the size it is. Um, and where it is possible, James. James Buller. Uh, yes. Um, basically, the the elevator is going to be carrying materials to and from the um, the upstairs. And you know, granted, you know, there'll be brewing happening when there weren't patrons in the tasting room. So you know, the layout of the building was a bit tricky with all the functions that we had. And we also wanted the brewing area to be seen by the people that are that, that are there. So, but basically they're gonna be circulating through the tasting room with the, with the lift, uh, a small you know hand lift to bring the material um, from the storage room to below. So, you know, basis is still building uh, we're not being duplicitous with what we're doing, but we're also stacking on what we needed. Um, and we didn't want to do something where we, where we ran out of storage. So, you know, I don't know how else to, to say that. Can you tell um, me what's stored up there? Grains and, and whatever you need for, 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 for the brewing. I mean, the, 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 the potential owner is, is, is here. So I think he can also speak to this. Richard. You're, 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 you're muted. Oh, hold on. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of things that need to be stored. The grains, the oats, the, the kegs. So as the uh, brewery um, uh, produces the beer and uh, saves it into the kegs, they need to be stored. Depending on how successful we are, which hopefully we're as successful as all of you think we are going to be, but uh, that is potential growth. Do I think we're gonna need that in the first few years that we're gonna need all the storage? No, I don't. But uh, do I hope that, uh, that we're producing enough here that other restaurants and, and locales are using it? We're gonna need a lot, of a lot of space to store kegs. And you know, it, it, you know, as far as the access of the elevator, you know, in, in the design, uh, according to my architect, and he spoke to it, he thought that that was the best place to put the, uh, the elevator. I'm not an expert on where the elevator should go, but the reason for the elevator is that we could store upstairs, which is generally not what you do, but we wanted to have enough parking, so we had to take the building down. Originally, we were not going to take the building down. We were gonna use the building as it was, and it wasn't until parking became an issue that we had to now think about how to re-erect re this, which meant putting what we would normally have on a ground floor up above the tasting room. Yeah, I, I would like to speak for a second about the existing building. Um, as, as you know, we're in a FEMA zone. Um, and so the existing building is not FEMA compliant. So, so, you know, we actually, the first 
you know, when we started the project, that building was going to be used and utilized for tasting, storage. Um, and unfortunately, because of the level that we had to achieve, we could not build a floor inside the building and still inhabit the building. So, so basically we had to go to plan B, which is to do a fairly compact building, matching the existing setbacks to the, uh, to, to the rear yard. Um, and we basically took that building and made it into, in, into a cube and make, made it as compact as possible. But to Richard's point, um, you know, we, we didn't want to do something that he would outgrow also. We have to elevate the building. That's what you said. Yeah. Anything further, Mr. Bruno? No, thank you. No. Any further questions from the board? Ms. Cruz and then Ms. Fujari? Uh, yeah, I had a, uh, the concerns that the uh, residents had, um, which would be with the party buses or buses with um, that people go um, as they do at the wineries. Um, in such a small, you know, close to such a uh, residential area. I really have a hard time with that because, again, if somebody shows up, um, you're, I have, I've gone out to the wineries. I, if you're there, you've come from wherever you're coming from, you're not leaving. You're going to wait to be seated, to taste. You know, that's what you're going there for. And hopefully if you are successful, which we hope that you are, you would want them to stick around to taste your beer. So I have concerns with if, um, what would you do with a bus uh, coming in for tasting? Well, can I respond? How do I, okay. First of all, you know, I, um, I don't know, you know, the legal, I mean, if we can restrict buses, as far as I'm concerned, we don't need buses. We don't, you know, we don't need buses to fill our, our space. So it's not my intent to have buses. As far as people showing up, if we were over capacity, there is a Dubco, which is a very short walk or drive. They could turn around and drive and go to Dubco. There's plenty of other breweries that they can go to in the area. Uh, we're not the only brewery. We don't want to be the only brewery. We just want to be one of the breweries. Um, in terms of uh, the fear as far as real crowding, I mean, we're, we're open to anything that you suggest. So. If it means uh, negotiating parking, additional parking up, you know, at one of those parking lots, then we could we could do that. We could have an attendant take uh, excess people. But I, I personally think that that won't be needed because we're going to quickly fill up our our space, as you say, and and they're going to be turned away. This is this is not going to be a party bus situation. This is not a winery out east. Uh, Ms. Krug, Cruz, this is just a beer tasting. Where, and if, uh, while I am not 100% familiar with all the breweries, uh, the there's one in Lindenhurst where people just drive there, couples, three or four friends come and they, they sit, they, they try some of the various beer brews, which I can't even understand how they put the stuff together, but uh, that's what they like. And it's it's really a um, it's it's not the old bar and grill where they're going to get drunk. They're going to have a, a, a pleasant. It's a different concept. And I think until that concept is understood, um, uh, there'll always be these questions. I, I, I one more thing I like to say. You know, yeah. White Cap uh, is across the canal, as you said, and they have a liquor license, and um, a lot of people visit White Cap. I've never found them to be disturbing or um, out of control. The noise that was brought up that could affect the trailer camp is certainly not being affected by Whitecap, which serves a whole lot of people with liquor and they don't seem to be out of control. So I think it's, mis it's a misconception to think of this as a bar. This is more like Whitecap with, with no food. I mean, with, I mean, it's, and no liquor. I mean, it, it's a different type of person that goes to this type of brewery. It's a family, uh, you know, generally people come, bring their they bring their kids and it, it's not, it's not what you think it is. It's not a, uh, uh, a bar. Anything further, Ms. Cruz? 
no, but I do want to say, I don't know about fa family friendly. I don't know if I want to take my kids to a uh, beer tasting, but I, I do what you understand what you're saying. Um, and I do have a friend who does love uh, beer and they actually do travel. They've gone to, they go to all the breweries. They've gone to Brooklyn, Queens. So this, um, that's what they like. I like the wineries, but they do go uh, to the brewery to uh, taste. So that was all I wanted to say. I'm concerned about the uh, limos and buses coming out, um, especially from different places because that, you know, breweries are in. Thank you, Mr. Fujari. Oh yeah, Mr. Chairman, I don't have uh, a question. I do have uh, a comment that I, I would like to raise. I, I share um, all of the comments and, and concerns that my colleagues on the board and many of the residents have, have, have raised. Um, I don't think this is a bad use. I just think it's a bad location. Uh, it's too intensive a use for the size lot and its proximity to, to residents. Now we can sit and talk about, you know, addressing uh, all of these concerns through covenants and restrictions, and we can probably uh, draft those covenants and restrictions, but I think that would only resolve the issues on paper. I think uh, the covenants that we would come up with would, would just be unenforceable. We've faced them before with other uses, with the overflow parking, the hanging out outside. I don't know a restaurant who turns people away and says, oh, we're full, you got you, you know, we're not gonna let you in. Um, the here again, it's too intensive a use near a, um, a residential neighborhood and it's um, too intensive a use for the size of the lot. Mm -hmm. Even giving them the benefit of the doubt with the parking between their employees and between the patrons that are gonna come there there's gonna be overflow parking up and down Degnan Boulevard, which is going to be a nightmare. Um, and, and that's my comment. I don't think we could, uh, and I don't think we can address this through covenants. Thank you, Mr. Fujiari. Any further questions from the board? Mr. Chairman. <laughs> and Mr. Brown. Yeah, just, just one other thing too. In, in reference to the, the parking, which was, was my concern and the, and the traffic, um, and, and I do agree with everything that Mr. Fujiari said. I'm going to uh, JR's Steakhouse, which is on the corner there. I've been there when people from that restaurant that was overflow parking down the street. <laughs> so it, it, I, I think that could be a major issue with this application. Thank you. Mr. Nicole, would you like to add anything further to the application? Uh, nothing further, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I, and I do... Uh, share Mr. Fujari's concerns. I think I've expressed them certainly. Uh, I think the area uh, where this is going is much different than the other three that were used as comparators. I also think that the site itself is much too small uh, for this intensive of a use, especially in one of those areas. That being said, I'll entertain a motion. Chairman? Mr. Fujari. Mr. Chairman, um, I'll make a motion that we close this hearing and uh, deny this application tonight. It's a motion by Mr. Frujari to close the public hearing and deny the application. Is there a second to that? I would. Mr. Moriarty, second that. I would second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? One abstention, Mr. Matamore. The application has been denied. Thank you. Item two on the agenda, which is 2280 Union Boulevard, LLC, PB 2021-020, south side of Union Boulevard, County Route 50, 329.8 feet west of Saxon Avenue, Bayshore, 2280 Union Boulevard, applicant request the modification of site plan requirements and planning board special permit conditions associated with TC 5121. Applicant also requests a planning board special permit for the outdoor overnight parking of unattached box trailers in the industrial one district pursuant to 68-340.1P. Site plan modifications are also requested as part of this application. Good evening, Mr. Bazell. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the applicant, Joseph F. Bazell, Bazell Bland of Visconti, 535 Broad Hollow Road, Suite B4 in Melville. The application concerns modifications to an industrial one property located on the south side of Union Boulevard, about 330 feet west of Saxon Avenue. The lot is rectangular in shape with 39,100 square feet with 128 feet of width along forth and a depth of about 312 feet. There is an existing building on the east side of the property about 58 feet 
in from Union Boulevard. We are preserving and working with that building. The parking is on the west side and in the rear. We are working with those conditions as well. To the west, we have vacant land owned by the county. To the north is Union Boulevard. Along Union, you have a variety of industrial uses. There are some condos and there is a gas station. To the east, there are some condos that are on Saxon. The uh, area adjacent this lot is used for parking. To the south, there is some county land and the maintenance facilities for the condo. Um, the property was rezoned industrial one by the town board in 2013 under the prior owner. The town board also granted a special permit for the outside storage of six trucks. The applicant purchased this property in February 2020, just before COVID, and is now in the process of completing that application process, adjusting to its own um, use of the property. The property will be occupied by a related company. The application is a holding company. GC Environmental, now on Oak Street in Bayshore, an environmental contractor will be taking up occupancy in the um, premises. They do phase one assessment, phase two assessments groundwater, asbestos, surveys, remediation, tank closures, environmental remediation and remedial investigations, tank compliance and regulatory compliance. Um, on this particular site, as you can see from the site plan, um, we are reusing the existing building. The overwhelming majority of the renovations are internal to the building. We are working with the existing site layout. We're not changing much. We're adding a refuse enclosure. We're eliminating an external loading dock. We're eliminating some bollards and we're adding some parking. Not major matters in the big picture. But the site is what it is in terms of the um, size and configuration of the lot. And that same holds true for the building. There's a single curb cut on Union. Um, we're, ke we're keeping that orientation. It's on the west side of the property. Um, there will be six parking spaces added up front, included handicap parking. There are 20 parking spots on the west side of the building, as appears on the site plan, plus two additional spots that are land banked. There are 10 parking spaces in the rear, and the refuse is in the rear. The overnight storage we're talking about here is limited to two trailers. The six trucks have already been approved by the town board. The applicant will be putting up a screening fence and gate at the rear of the building, extending from the rear line of the building all the way across the refuse enclosure area. It will be a decorative fence and it will have a gate so that vehicles can get in and out of the rear area. Um, so there are two trailers are used as part of the building of part of the business operations for GC environmental. The six trucks are used as well. We're requesting two unattached box trailers be stored overnight in designated parking spaces behind the screening fence in the rear of the building. As far as the site plan modifications, um, parking provided is 38, parking required is 43. It's about, with short five spaces or about 7.6%. And we are adding parking here to increase the parking presently available on the site. Front yard landscaping provided is 23.8. Required is 25, so we're down 1.2, uh, or in the big picture, 4.8% of the required landscaping. Again, a very minor number. And the front yard landscaping, we provide 41, required is 50. The reason for that here is we're adding the parking up front to increase the on-site parking on this particular lot. 
Um, this is a positive development of an existing industrial property with an existing industrial building. The site will be refurbished and improved. We're adding landscaping. Um, we're adding new site, uh, refurbishing the site improvements. Two trailers, very modest, um, behind a screening fence at the very rear of the site behind the building in designated parking spaces. Site modifications are also modest. We're working with the existing building and existing site conditions in connection with relocating an environmental contractor from uh, another location in Bayshore to this location on Union Boulevard. We believe it's a positive uh, modification to this site, which will improve the site and the surrounding area. Thank you, Mr. Wazell. Is there anything further? No, my client and my architect are here if the board has any questions. Thank you. I do not see anyone signed up to speak on this. Anyone come in later wish to be heard? Not seeing anyone, I'm gonna to turn to Ms. Wozniak for a report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the subject property is located on the south side of Union Boulevard, approximately 330 feet west of Saxon Avenue in Bayshore. It's an improved with an 11,000 square foot industrial building. Um, the property was granted a change of zone to industrial one district, along with a special permit for the overnight parking of six 24 foot trucks back in 2013, in order to permit a warehouse and distribution center. At that time, the board granted several site plan modifications as well. Uh, tonight, the applicant is looking to obtain an additional special permit to allow the outdoor overnight parking of two unattached box trailers, along with front yard landscaping and parking relaxations. The previous site plan reference in the TC has also changed slightly. Um, the applicant is now proposing a slight change in the location of the truck parking and is proposing additional parking in front of the building where there was all landscaping originally because now the majority of the building will be offices, therefore requiring more parking. Um, in addition to approvals from this board, the applicant will also require a variance to permit the outdoor overnight parking of trucks and trailers less than 200 feet from a residential use. Uh, the storage will still be located in the rear of the property furthest from the residential use, and the applicant will be required to provide a double row of evergreen plantings along the Eastern property line, as noted in the TC. Based on this, planning recommends the board grant the application subject to the attached conditions. Thank you, Ms. Wozniak. Uh, are there any questions from the board? Not seeing any, is there anything further from the applicant? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. Is, is there a motion? The chairman? Mr. Brown. Hey, Mr. Chairman, based on Ms. Wozniak's staff report, I'd like to make a motion to grant the application. There's a motion by Mr. Brown to grant the application subject to the conditions. I added that in, Kevin, you're okay with that, I hope. Uh, awesome. <laughs> second by Mr. Moriarty. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstentions. The application is granted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have Item three on the agenda, Venture One Acquisitions has been adjourned. Item four on the agenda, Tambwood Application Public Hearing, Great River Enterprise 2, care of John King, CZ 2021-010, South Side of Veterans Memorial Highway, State Route 454, approximately 227 feet west of Fifth Avenue, Bohemia, 3040 and 3064 Veterans Memorial Highway. Applicant requests a change of zone from Business 3 to Industrial Corridor District and a Planning Board special permit for a warehouse use pursuant to 68-466.1B. Site plan modifications may be required as part of this application. Good evening to the applicant. Good evening. Uh, good evening to the board. My name is Joseph Clemens, a partner within the firm German and Clemens Architecture PC, located at 3275 Veterans Memorial Highway, Suite B11, Ron Conkema, New York, 11779. I'm speaking to you this evening in regards to the 3.806 acre parcel situated on the south side of Veterans Memorial Highway and approximately 196 feet west of Fifth Avenue with a property address of 3040 and 3064 Veterans Memorial Highway, Bohemia, New York, 11716. Property tax amount number is 0500-14602-5.1. This application proposes a change of zone from business three to industrial corridor district, along with a planning board special permit for a warehouse use pursuant to section 68-466.1B. The subject property was previously occupied and used by Bauman Realty Associates or Bauman Bus Company, which used a split zone lot in connection with their operations consisting of bus service and outdoor storage of their vehicle fleet. 
Such outdoor storage has existed on this lot dating back to the early 1980s. The Business 3 District does allow for a commercial automobile parking field as of right, provided that a site plan be submitted to and approved by the Planning Board or per a designee indicating compliance with town standards. Per the Town of Islip Zoning Code, the Business 3 District is actually designated as a higher classification than that of the Industrial Corridor District. However, after reviewing the history of the site, along with the spirit and intent of the Comprehensive Plan and the Industrial Corridor District Zoning Criteria, which was amended in its entirety as recently as November of 2017, it would be my assumption that the Town of Islip would prefer the site to be designed and developed as ICD. As such, the proposal set before you this evening requests just that, a change of zone to ICD to allow my client to vastly improve that of the, exist the existing grounds and remove the outdoor storage of buses and replace it with a well-manicured property consisting of office and warehouse uses. The purpose of the ICD district is to promote high quality development and redevelopment and enhance the area's success as a premier industrial and office district. It was established with the intent to provide opportunities for successful and sustainable growth within the district in an attempt to improve the town of Islip's gateway to MacArthur Airport. This proposal presented before you requests the consideration for a redevelopment of a site which contains two vacant, dilapidated, and underutilized buildings and convert it into a much improved site which includes two separate buildings, one of 30,000 square feet and another at 18,240 square feet, equaling a proposed FAR of approximately 27.6% under that of the permitted 35%. The buildings comply with Suffolk County Department of Health Services wastewater management regulations, as well as provide sufficient parking. Presently, a buffer relaxation would be necessary to accommodate the 14 stalls at the rear of the property. Approximately 7,400 square feet of individual office space is proposed within the larger building that fronts Veterans Memorial Highway, and a total of approximately 12,000 square feet of office space will be proposed throughout both buildings. The remaining area is to be designed as warehouse, which does require a planning board special permit, which is one of the requests being made this evening. As a stipulation of such a request, I would like to note that no overhead doors face any street. The layout and orientation of the buildings on site were strategically planned so that no overhead doors was so that the overhead doors would face each other rather than face any of the frontage areas. Larger building provides only drive-in overhead doors, while the smaller of the buildings provides for both drive-in and loading. The reason why only the smaller building provides for this convenience was because of its location on site being tucked away from view of the main roadway. Being that we are currently bordering a residential zone, such overhead doors will be properly screened from view with either fencing or a wall treatment, along with landscaping pursuant to the satisfaction of the planning department and the board. It is our intent to be a pleasant neighbor. You can see, however, that the majority of the site does not abut an actual residential property, however, is adjacent to a partially abandoned street, Charles Street. Being that Charles Street cannot theoretically be opened, we had initially designed the site as if the property had a rear yard setback. We have requested to obtain the remaining portion of the paper road and are awaiting a response from the town to firm up the design. However, if not obtained, the plan may require modification, which would be discussed with the planning department in more detail and may also require further relief by the Zoning Board of Appeals. This partially abandoned paper street could theoretically be considered a front yard, which requires different setback requirements. However, the Business 3 district, which the property, property is currently zoned, would allow for 25 foot front yard setbacks and only 15 foot rear yard setbacks. By these standards, we would comply. One of the objectives within the industrial corridor district is to en enhance the aesthetic of the roadways by means of landscaping, lot area, frontage, and architectural quality. The plan presented provides a minimum of 10% front yard landscaping as required by the subdivision and land development regulations and complies with the front yard dimensional setback criteria as required within the zoning code. I would also like to note that a small plaza or seating area is proposed at the front entry area of the larger building which fronts on Vets Highway, something which was encouraged within the initial study of the district. This would be an area which serves employees or potential guests and would promote increased activity, public health, and enjoyment. The property is also comprised of approximately 30% of total landscaping, including buffers, 25% not including the buffer area. As you can see from the provided exterior renderings uh, that were submitted, the buildings proposed would each have superior or high quality architectural elements. 
Each elevation would have an exterior brick facade with decorative cornice and upper glazing. Each facade also has decorative columns, which provide a change in material to interrupt a horizontal plane. These materials were chosen as they are of high quality and provide aesthetically pleasing and enduring structures, which contribute positively to the overall character of the corridor. This was especially important on the larger building, which fronts Veterans Memorial Highway. A decorative mansard roof will shield from view any potential rooftop equipment and provide some distinction between that of the strictly office area and the remaining warehouse spaces. Steel elements will be used as decorative elements on the front facade as well. The seating area at the entry mentioned earlier will provide the warm welcome which employees and guests can appreciate. It is hopefully apparent from this presentation that virtually every detail of the site shall be improved upon. As you can see from the site, from the plans set before you, my client simply wished to establish and maintain a property of which conforms with the general intent that the town of Islip had when preparing the industrial corridor district regulations, while also providing something which contextually fits in with the surrounding area. The improvements requested will become a benefit to the community and enhance the aesthetic of Veterans Memorial Highway. New street trees, continuous used bushes will be added, which will enhance the look of the site and conform to the town of Islip standards. The proposal will be a vast improvement from the blighted vacant property, which presently exists there today, and likely be a great improvement from the previous uses, which have recently occupied the site. As such, we would respectfully request that you Sorry, as such, we would respectfully request that you further allow us to co cooperate with the planning department following this evening's hearing so that we can work toward a recommendation for a change of zone so that my clients can convert this eyesore of a site into a pleasant neighbor and we can continue to enhance the Bohemia community. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Clement. So I'm gonna go to public hearing. I have a Deborah Stoll. Ms. Stoll, when you're ready, just unmute, you can go ahead and speak. I don't know if you, there you go. go right I'm ahead. sorry, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, I just want to start by saying that um, it, it sounds great. We're excited to have something that's not an eyesore as the bus company was. Um, myself and several of our neighbors have been in a living hell for many years with them there because they're, they were using a back gate where Charles Street is going into 9th Avenue. We had several, you know, for years we've listened to backup beeping from buses and had traffic back here along our residences, which has been an absolute nightmare. Concern right now would be, are these trucks, from what I understand, going to be refrigeration trucks that are also going to be running? Um, lighting has been an issue, shining into our bedrooms at all hours of the night. Um, which has caused, you know, many sleepless nights here. And, um, you know, the, the most important thing is, is, is there going to be back gate usage? Where, where are the trucks going to have ingress and egress? Are they only going to be allowed on Veterans Highway, which was originally what the bus company was supposed to have been doing? Thank you. We will get those questions answered for you right after the staff report. Thank you. That's all I show who has uh, signed up to speak. Anybody who joined late wish to be heard? Not seeing anyone, I'm gonna to turn to Mr. Colgan for a report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. <clears throat> As stated by the applicant, this application proposes replacing a non-conforming bus fleet yard with two industrial buildings. The proposed industrial uses are permitted in the industrial corridor district and comply with the recently adopted Veterans Memorial Highway Corridor Study, uh, which was adopted a few years ago. This is a positive development for the continued uh, economic development and goals for this area. The key concerns from this proposal are traffic and noise. The staff has received correspondence from one of the residences regarding the usage of Charles Street by the bus company along the rear yards of the residential properties to the south. The current plan shows no access to Charles Street and the staff will recommend a covenant prohibiting access to Charles in the future should it not be abandoned. The applicant is showing a wall along the southern property line, which should help mitigate some of the traffic noise anticipated. There may be other opportunities to block the noise, including locating some of the loading areas, possibly turning the buildings, relocating the offices to the rear, or extending wing walls along the loading areas. 
it should be noted that one of the loading areas is within 100 feet of the residential zone, which would require a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals. The staff recommends the applicant rethink this location to avoid the need for variance and further push noise away from the residences. Now, the staff recommends that the board reserve decision tonight so that we can work on these details on the site plan with the applicant. Thank you, Ms. Colgan. Ms. Clemens, any uh, plans to use that back road as a uh, ingress or egress? No, sir. So just to clarify some of the design intent, uh, the back road, to, to, I guess, which connects to 9th Avenue would not be used. Uh, in any event, we did pick up the abandoned remaining piece of Charles Street. Majority of it, if not all of it, would be used. It would be required to be used as a buffer to the residents anyway. Um, so I can't logically see any way to physically get a connection to 9th Street. I believe they were doing that illegally over the course of many years. Um, in regards to light glaring into the space, as I, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, all the overhead garage doors do realistically uh, face each other. Then nothing really faces a, a frontage or none of them face the residents. In any event, the most recent plan that, that Sean had up had a higher retaining wall or, or just a wall to kind of attenuate any sound or, or potential light um, from, from kind of exposing themselves to the residents as well as some dense plantings back there which would also give it more of an aesthetically pleasing look um, for them. Thank you. And in terms of trucks running and uh, what have you and also the one comment from Mr. Colgan about possibly relocating yeah, and we were we were looking at the the loading areas. I, I had the conversation with Sean earlier this morning. That is definitely something we would uh, look at uh, and and potentially try to avoid any type of, um, I guess, board of appeals approvals for for that. Um, so that's definitely something we can consider, continue the conversation on and see how we can rectify. Right, and I think there's just a one other question: whether or not there are refrigeration trucks that would be running out there. That I do not know entirely the answer to. Um, so I don't wanna swear under oath for it just cause I don't know what the uses would be potentially at this point just as a warehouse use. So yeah. I'm sure it could potentially be a, a possibility but um, I, I can't definitively say. No problem, thank you. Mr. Bruno. Mr. Clemens, did you just say that you've actually acquired the part no. of the- No, 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 oh, no. Oh, okay. We, 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 we filed for it. So if you look at the site, it was kind of a unique situation. It appears that a portion of the site had to pick yeah. up the entire portion. So it was a staff recommendation with planning when we initially were looking into this application to see if we could potentially pick up the remaining half for Charles Street as well. So we have we have filed a petition with the assessor's office to pick up the second half. Uh, and as far as I'm aware, the only thing we're waiting for is engineering feedback. Okay, because the, the reason I'm asking is one, it will obviously solve a lot of your problems. It would solve the majority of the problems. If, if we yeah. had that, I wouldn't have any setback issues. It, it would pretty much solve the majority of all the problems. And, and the other reason I'm bringing it up is because if you have acquired it, or I would think you would want to acquire it so that it gets rezoned as part of the property. And because if you acquire it later and it's not in the call of the meeting, yeah. you're going to find that you still have a piece of residential property there. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. Do we have any time frame on that? Uh, if we checked with the assessor's office late last week and they said the only feedback they were waiting for was engineering. They had the other two. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further questions for the board, Mr. Frujari? Uh Yes, I have a question for the applicant. Um, it, Looks like you're you're fully compliant as far as parking. You're providing 103 parking spaces for a warehouse use. Do you think you need that many parking spaces? We don't usually ask. To be question. honest with you, that that was a question I would have posed as well. Uh, it, it really depends on how the site is going to be honestly utilized. I, I would want some disbursement of parking just so people can get to their spaces spread out. But one of the thoughts was in any event, say, say we didn't get the partially abandoned piece of Charles Street, theoretically, would we need that many parking spaces? It's a good question. Personally, I, I wouldn't think so. It could have been a possibility where we land bank those 14 spaces along that rear property line, if anything. Um, but that that's always something that we can consider in any event if we have to. Um, I, I personally wouldn't think you need that many parking stalls, but. Yeah, that was my thought exactly. If you can uh, consider and work with planning and possibly land bank those those 14 stalls along the southern border with the. Yeah, and realistically, if we pick up, if we did pick up that other half of Charles Street, we wouldn't have any issues because then the 25 foot buffer would pretty much pick up exactly where that street was. Yeah, so, yeah, but the. They would be land banks, so in case you you did need them, a use change or something like that, you always have them. But yes, you know, 
Okay. Yeah. Just that's just my comment. Thank you. Any further questions from the board? Anything further from the applicant? No, sir. Is there a motion? Mr. Matamor. Unmute. You muted. Mr. Chairman, uh, I move to close the hearing and reserve decision uh, in order to work out the site details for the app. Thank you. There's a motion by Mr. Matamor to close the public hearing and reserve decision. Is there a second? I have a second, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Second by Mr. Moriarty. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, everybody. Item five on the agenda, Town Board application, public hearing, RG158 Candlewood LLC, CZ2021-011, south side of Candlewood Road, approximately 1,820 feet west of Fifth Avenue, County Route 13, Bayshore, 158 Candlewood Road. Applicant requests a modification of covenants and restrictions associated with TC5063 in order to permit more than one user and allow overnight loading and unloading of vehicles. Good evening to the applicant. They were just waiting for a few more to get tied in. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, I'm just looking around to make sure I have my whole team here. Um, Philip Butler with the law firm of Farrell Fritz representing the applicant. I'm joined tonight by Mickey Columbus. She represents the applicant, um, which is uh, RG158 Candlewood LLC, joined uh, also by Wayne Muller and uh, Chris Robinson, whom I'm sure you know well from RM Engineering. Um, we also have uh, Ms. Leslie uh, Lene. Uh, she is an industrial properties real estate broker. Um, and uh, unfortunately, we also have a sound engineer, Trey Geyer, uh, from Cerami Associates, who is unable to join us. But uh, I will be um, speaking on some information that he provided that's relevant to the application. Um, so a little bit of background. Um, what we're here for tonight is to uh, modify some historic covenants on the subject property that were imposed in 1999 as part of a change of zone from I believe it was residential to the present industrial uh, one zoning. Um, they were not attached to what is presently there, the, uh, the roughly 197,000 square foot warehouse. However, they do remain on the property as part of that prior change of zone from, from which that application eventually came. Um, so Mr. Bruno, uh, I believe you worked on this application so you may be intimately familiar with it. Um, so any insight you have, we welcome. Uh, so just a little bit of background. Again, the property is currently improved with a roughly 197,000 square foot warehouse with a 51,000 square foot mezzanine. The warehouse was CO'd in February of 2014 and uh, it has been operated as the Ruby's costume uh, warehouse. Uh, Ruby's is gonna be going away. And uh, as a result of that, um, the, pro the property was put on the market uh, my client will be purchasing it prospectively. They are the contract vendee currently, um, and uh, they will be continuing to use it as a warehouse. The reason we are looking uh, to um, modify the covenants tonight is because uh, we feel they unreasonably restrict, frankly, the marketability and efficient use of the warehouse. Um, the two covenants in, in question are part of a 1999 covenant again. The first one restricts the, uh, the tenancy or use of the entire 200,000 square foot uh, warehouse building to one tenant or one user uh, unless an application is made to the planning board uh, with a public hearing uh, for permission to do uh, multiple tenants. Additionally, uh, there is a restriction on the hours of operation that provides that there shall be no basically overnight loading and unloading of trucks between the hours of 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Um, so I'll get into the reasons that justify the, the request for modification briefly. Um, preliminarily, we did try to do some investigation back into the 1999 application to find out why these uh, restrictions were imposed. As the board is probably aware, these are not uh, mandatory uh, restrictions, they are discretionary. Uh, so the thought was maybe they were imposed to address some perceived issue that would come up with an industrial building on the site. Um, however, uh, we were unable to determine that definitively, but from basically, um, you know, getting the information we could and consulting with uh, R&M who worked on the, uh, on the warehouse, it seems that 
it was really more of a prophylactic approach where these um, these conditions were proposed way back when nobody objected and and so they and they went and, and they were reported against the property so um, basically uh, Long Island based on its high population and its high business concentration continues to see a very high demand for warehouse uses not only for distributors and retailers but manufacturers importers exporters and a number of other variety of uses and we're not just talking about shipping and distribution, we're also talking about long and short-term storage for, for goods and materials. So um, again, the client, the applicant is, is looking to continue the use of the warehouse, um, but would like basically to allow for greater flexibility in terms of the hours of operation and the tenants. Um, the size of the building is such that it, it basically is too large for a good number of warehouse tenants, um, especially if there's no ability to sublease. So, you know, it makes it more efficient for uh, for tenants to be able to use unused sites or rather unused space when when vacancies occur, um, and that increases efficiency and the likelihood that that tenants will continue to lease space in the building rather than seeking smaller units elsewhere. Mr. Butler, I just so maybe to help you out here a little bit, unless there's concern from the board members, I don't think uh, we have concerns about lifting the restrictions that may be in place. Uh, I think the concern that I've heard expressed, and I'll, if anybody in the board has a concern about that, please say so now. I can let them continue on that. But the real concern I think I've heard from both staff and from other board members would be the overnight loading and unloading in terms of the hours of that, how that would work, and the noise associated with that. But in terms of the single use to multi use, I have not heard any uh, concerns from fellow board members. So I don't want you to go down that okay. path and waste time. I mean, you're welcome to put on the record what you'd like, but I think sure. unless I see something from one of the board members that wants to hear that, I don't think that was a major concern of anyone. So it really, the only question I've heard uh, is really the overnight loading and unloading, what that means, the hours, the noise, et cetera. I appreciate that, Mr. Chairman. And, I, and I'll move on, on on that note then. So we uh, we did decide to be proactive on this application and we did commission Cerami Associates to prepare a noise study. Um, so they did monitor the uh, property for, I believe it was a week. Um, and they did do uh, noise samplings, I'll call it on, um, the surrounding streets, principally uh, Peck Avenue, Candlewood, um, and Princess. Peck Avenue and Princess Avenue are, are both the residential streets. Uh, Peck Avenue being the one that is um, approximately 75 feet from the building uh, is the is the rear uh, lot lines of the houses that front on Peck Avenue. Um, and then Princess Avenue is about 200 feet to the east on Candlewood, to the northeast. Um, so again, they, they did a number of samplings over the course of a week, the results. And again, I apologize. Um, our consultant wasn't able to be here. He had a scheduling conflict, but we will submit his report, uh, in writing once it's complete. Um, the conclusion was that Peck Avenue would not see a perceptible increase in ambient noise overnight. And what we believe that's attributable to is the fact that the building itself is 43 feet high and something like 183 feet wide. And then there's another 75 feet until you even get to the property line. So it's, it's essentially uh, a, its own sound barrier for the loading docks. Um, with respect to Princess Avenue, which again is, is located some distance to the Northeast. Um, again, there was no indication that there would be a, a perceptible increase in what is presently the ambient noise level on that street. Um, the consultant did note that technically the ambient level there already exceeds what the code permits, but that shouldn't be if, um, impacted by, um, by, by the overnight uh, hours of operation. Um, and in theory- the, Are you suggesting 24 hours operation or are you still suggesting having limits on there in terms of the time in the evening? 24 hour operation overnight. So the restriction is currently between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. So they would want that restriction lifted. Um, so as I was saying, um, the ambient noise levels on Princess Avenue would not be perceptibly increased um, to the extent that an issue were to come up in the future. Uh, first of all, the, the noise increase would only be um, associated when the northernmost bays of the warehouse are in use, which is not all the time. Um, and if there was an issue and a complaint filed in the future, the applicant is always uh, amenable to discussing noise attenuation or mitigation measures if they're needed. Um, we did FOIL to see if there were any noise complaints on record because as the 
warehouse currently operates, it is permitted to operate until 10 p.m. and it is permitted to start operating at 5 a.m. So those are those are pretty late and pretty early hours to begin with. So we imagine if there were any noise issues, we would have heard from from neighbors uh, at some point. Um, so having heard none, we we believe there there shouldn't be a noise issue. Um, And uh, uh, I, this speaks more to the uh, to the traffic flow. So uh, presently, um, the truck traffic is routed up Bessemer Drive, which goes straight north to Pine Air Drive, and uh, traffic to the south goes through Inez Drive, which goes down to Spence, which lets out onto Fifth. So the plan uh, is to have traffic continue to use those routes. So they would not be going along Candlewood, um, certainly not to the west, as there is a private prior covenant that prevents um, basically routing the trucking that in that direction. So again, based on the topography in the building and maintaining the current traffic plan, uh, we think there should not be any perceptible uh, increase in, in noise, notwithstanding that we are continuing to work overnight. Um, again, we have um, uh, Ms. Lene here to, to speak about the, the issue of not being able to have overnight loading and unloading. I mean, I, I'll touch on it, and then she can she build upon it if you would like. But basically, um, it's a preferred time of day to be able to load and unload trucks, only because if you start loading them starting at 5 a.m. in the morning, they're starting to leave at 6, 7, 8, which is obviously a peak hour of travel. So there are certain um, warehouse tenants that won't even consider warehouse uh, space that doesn't allow for overnight loading and unloading. So again, that, that affects the marketability of, of the space. Um, so again, that, that's one of the driving uh, reasons that we're, we're seeking to lift the covenants. Um, if I didn't mention it before, uh, there are industrial uses to the west, southwest, uh, sorry, east, southeast, and south. Um, those stop operating um, at or about the same time that the current warehouse does. So I don't think uh, there's any concern of noise impacts there. So again, we, we did uh, study and address Princess Avenue, Peck Avenue, um, and the environs. So uh, based on that, we, we think we've um, cornered the issue and we've, we think we've addressed it adequately. Thank you. Do you want me to go to public hearing and then to staff report and then come back with questions? Or do you have anything further on your presentation? Um, I, I should just add that um, there is a condition that there is no outdoor storage or loading unloading, and we are not seeking to modify that. So the only storage and loading would occur on the, um, the loading bays that are currently provided. Thank you. So I see, I think uh, we've got a public hearing. I have a Raja Ahmed who wanted to be heard. Uh, you're, Mr. Ahmed, you can go ahead. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, go ahead. Great. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Um, I truly do appreciate it. Uh, I wanted to let everybody know that for the most part, um, we have spoken to the community on Peck Avenue and the surrounding streets, um, some of whom were unable to be on this meeting, some of whom were on the meeting come 630 forward and were unable to continue to be um, on this town hall meeting. So we would like to believe based on, you know, their conversations with us that we are speaking for the community at, at, at large that is affected by this application. Uh, we absolutely oppose the application for a number of reasons. Uh, one being the sound. Um, obviously, as it stands, there is one tenant that has been mentioned. It's Ruby's costumes. Um, at that time, when we had opposed there were many different stipulations um, that I believe were imposed and, and we were assisted with, some of which were the fencing, some of which was security lighting, some of which was uh, them not being able to sublet as they normally do. So Ruby's tends to build warehouse space and then sublet said warehouse space, leaving it in you know, disrepair, dis you know, and many different parties uh, that all claim that they are renters and therefore they're no longer responsible for the property. We're concerned about that. We're concerned about invariably what happens, although you mentioned the truck routes, is the trucks use GPS. Some truckers are new. Some truckers have never come to these warehouses before. They do go down our residential roads. 
So by changing the hours and the load times, now there is the potential for them to come down these roads as they do quite frequently uh, in error during those hours that will create its own noise uh, separate of any loading or unloading that takes place. When the warehouse was constructed, many of the forestry greenery that was there that was providing us with sound barrier, oxygen, and you know, beautiful scenic coverage was destroyed and never replanted. So I can attest that from my backyard, I have a direct sighted view of, as you said, the 40 foot high warehouse that basically affects not only our property values, but because of sound during the day, our peace of mind. Um, at the moment, they do not load in the evenings and they do leave, although they're allowed to go up till 10 p.m., I believe around 5 p.m. is the general time that Ruby stops their operations as a courtesy to us. And therefore, at least after 5 p.m., we have some semblance of residential healing. Although we are staring at a 40-foot warehouse, it is not active. Uh, in the evening hours. By you proposing this application, there is no limit to 24-hour loading, uh, potentially, which will cause us uh, not only, uh, you know, distress from a sound standpoint, but I believe that the trucks will be idling. I meant there was no mention of any provision to stop them from idling during those hours, and there will be nobody policing it nonetheless, even if there was. So that has its own uh, ramifications from a pollution standpoint, as far as we are concerned as a community. Um, we were very disheartened that at that time we were told that the tax base will increase. Those tax funds will be used subsequently on the surrounding streets. Our streets have never been paved. You know, uh, Candlewood Road is probably one of the filthiest roads in the area. And as I said, the greenery was never even replanted. Um, so we were okay with the rubies because unfortunately we had no choice. Rubies was allowed to build. Rubies was allowed to stay as a tenant. Uh, but they did their very best to work with the community in the hours of operation, in the cleanliness and landscaping. And as a single tenant, there was no concern of somebody deviating from those rules, restrictions, or just general practices as a tenant of the warehouse. Um, we definitely ask that this application be denied in whole, um, you know, I heard some mention or other of some type of uh, ambient sound already going above the permitted levels. So it sounds like they are already in a position where it is obviously affecting us. Uh, as far as complaints, do you complain every day? And if we complain every day, what's going to change? Is Ruby's no longer going to be our neighbor? As you said, it's on mere 75 feet from our rear property line. I mean, you can imagine living 75 feet away from a 40 foot tall factory that stretches by your own definition over 120 feet, I believe. It's a humongous warehouse and it is absolutely unacceptable as stands in a residential neighborhood, let alone to then allow it to operate, uh, you know, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because it will yield even more money for the vendee contract owner. That's all it is. They want to make more money and make it more marketable at the cost of the residential neighbors. Just I made that's right, exactly three what I'm doing. I just ask you to begin wrapping sure. up. Sure, that's fine. That those are the main bullet points. The trucks potentially following the GPS, the trees, the you know the the trees at the very least would create some type of potential sound barrier, uh, visual barrier, and pollution barrier. Um, we just hope that you could understand where we are coming from and what we've been living with and uh, at least dealing with, but we ask that it not be made any more worse for us. And we would greatly appreciate your consideration in helping us maintain what little residential feeling we have. Thank you. So anyone who joined the meeting later wish to be heard on this application? Not seeing anyone uh, raise their hand, I'm gonna to turn to Mr. Colgan to give us a report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm not going to belabor too much of what was already said. Obviously, I think the, the key concerns raised by yourself and, and the gentleman were the overnight noise. So what the staff would suggest is we receive the noise information that Mr. Butler was citing, review that in-house and with the board uh, before we bring this back for some sort of recommendation. So we recommend a reserve decision tonight. Thank you, Mr. 
Ms. Cole. Ms. Cole. Uh, Mr. Butler, would you like to add anything further to the application? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would. Um, I, I appreciate uh, Mr. Ahmed's comments and I, I fully understand them. Um, first of all, obviously, my client is not Ruby's. Um, you know, they they are working on a number of warehouse projects on Long Island. They are a good property owner. They obviously fully intend on being a good neighbor. Um, the restriction on the hours of loading and unloading will not stop trucks from coming and going to the property at any hour of the day. We're talking solely about the ability to dock trucks and load and unload them, which happens exclusively on the east side of the building. Obviously, the west side of the building is, is the buffer. Um, the, build, the property is, is very well maintained. The buffer has been maintained in accordance with the site plan. Um, if it hasn't, that, that will be news to us and something we would obviously have to address. Um, there is no idling of trucks. Uh, well, I shouldn't say no idling, but there is a covenant existing on the property that we are not looking to lift, which limits the amount of time that a truck can idle. Uh, so addressing that specific concern, obviously we're still subject to that covenant and, and would be violating um, the agreement if, if we didn't comply. Um, unfortunately, we can't do anything about the condition of the streets. Um, however, as I indicated before, uh, the truck traffic is not supposed to be going um, along Candlewood. It, it's supposed to be routed up towards Bessemer, uh, which goes to Pine Air and down Inez. Um, you know, a new property owner, a uh, new ball game. Um, I, I think uh, the applicant should be given the opportunity to be a good neighbor. And if an issue does come up, obviously, you know, the town always has enforcement mechanisms and ways of dealing with it. Um, I, I think that's all I really have to add. Um, if the board has any questions, we're happy to address them. Otherwise, uh, it sounds like we'll be back in front of you. Now that I'm unmuted, are there questions from board members? I'm not Mr. seeing Chairman? any. Oh, I did hear one. Is that Mr. Brown? Yes, it is. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I just uh, I have the same concerns that I guess Sh Sean mentioned, which is the noise that would be generated overnight, and I'd be interested in um, the staff report when they correlate all that information. Thank you. Mr. Brown, Any, Mr. Frugiari? Yeah, uh, just a clarification from the applicant. I, I, I believe during his presentation, he mentioned that there's not going to be any outdoor unloading and loading, uh, that it's all gonna occur inside the bays. Is that interior to the building or just within the loading dock within the bay? In the other words, the trucks back up to the loading dock and all the activity takes place between the interior of the uh, the bed of the truck and the interior of the building. I actually think Mr. Robinson would probably be better to speak to that um, than I would, just because I don't know the actual layout of the the bay specifically. No, they're uh, they're they're sealed docks. The the, the the trucks would back up, seal against the building, and the loading and unloading would occur inside the building or between the truck and the building, not exterior to the building. Right. So there's no open bays, right. basically. Yeah, that's that's my point exactly because that that in itself will mitigate sound and noise. Yeah, that, that's how it was constructed and how it will continue to operate. Okay, thank you very much. Further questions from the board? Not seeing any. I think we're all looking forward to uh, getting that report. I think that uh, was sent over to the town that Sean referenced and you referenced and uh, seeing that information. Very good. Thank you. Is there a motion? Mr. Moriarty. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, I would uh, move to close the hearing and reserve the decision this evening. Let uh, town uh, planning staff uh, sort out these issues with the applicant. Thank you as much by Mr. Moriarty to close the public hearing and reserve decision. Mr. Matamore, was that a second? That was a second by Mr. Matamore. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstention. Aye. We are reserved. Thank you. Thank you. Item six on the agenda, site plan modification decision item, Lewis M. Fabrizio, SP 2020-012, east side of Degnan Boulevard, number 29, 120 feet north of Recreation Road, Bayshore, applicant requests planning board approval for the use of an alternative drainage, drainage system and gravel parking area in connection with the proposal for site upgrades and new buildings for a construction company. Good evening to the applicant. Good evening, I'm Glenn Graham with Graham Associates, 1981 Union Boulevard, Bayshore, New York. I'm representing 
Matt Fabrizio. He is the owner of Doxy Point LLC. Matt is a uh, local builder who does most of his work on Fire Island. He is generally a house lifter. Uh, he also owns a bulkhead dock replacement company. Uh, this property is going to be used to house his equipment and is uh, basically his base operations. He has a small group of people of uh, 10 employees that would come to the site in the morning, get on the different uh, various boats that he has and head over to Fire Island to work. Um, we're proposing two 2,800 square foot storage buildings, uh, one 3,000 square foot building to hold an office, uh, the lower level being storage. We are in a FEMA zone. We are slightly south of the brewery that was discussed earlier tonight. Uh, this property is uh, more in nature as a marine use. Um, this, this will not be a marina. It's going to be used solely for the storage of his boats and barges that are used on Fire Island. So it should be a fairly sleepy place during the day. Uh, his employees would arrive in the morning and get back uh, early afternoon. We are in front of the board now to discuss really the drainage uh, due to the high groundwater table. Water table here is about two feet below grade. We had to look at an alternative uh, wicking system, which is just a series, uh, a large area of rock and gravel rather than a conventional cesspool or dry well system. I believe the board has approved similar systems recently at Oakdale Yacht and maybe also at the Sable Ferries. So if the board has any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Um, I do not see anyone who's here to, oh, it's a decision item. I'm not gonna go to a public hearing. Uh, that being said, uh, I'm gonna go to Mr. Gonzalez for a report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This industrial one zoned about one acre parcel uh, was previously improved with a small commercial building that was originally utilized as a fish packing plant back in uh, 1940. Uh, the site is currently improved with various asphalt areas and, and the bulkhead along Orwa Creek. Um, in 2010, this property was before the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, case number 153-10 attempting to establish non-conforming uses of a commercial shipyard, boat repair yard, boat storage on land and in water. Um, it was determined that sometime between 1940 and 1984, the use of the fish packing plant changed to a marine radio uh, electronics repair business, which was known as South Shore Marine Radio. Uh, the request for the non-conforming use was denied as the board determined the property was never used as a shipyard uh, or repair yard or boat storage yard. Um, the town board also denied a request for a tour sightseeing operation in 1986. Uh, so that's just a little history um, of property itself. Uh, as Mr. Uh, Graham stated, uh, the site plan before you is some upgrades for the commercial operation that does uh, you know, the construction work on Fire Island. Uh, as you can see on the site plan, there's three proposed warehouse buildings, along with a mostly gravel parking lot. Uh, town lot development standards require all parking areas to utilize asphalt. However, uh, as stated before, because of the location along the creek, high groundwater and the type of business, the parking stalls will be paved, as you can see, but uh, the rest of the area that is not landscaped will be gravel. Um, the applicant has worked diligently with staff as well as the town engineer on a plan that uh, engineering is comfortable with. The drainage system is also not a typical dry well method. Um, as stated before, it, it'll be a, a gravel and subgrade uh, perforated pipe um, trench basically, um, which also requires planning board approval. Um, the applicant was guided by engineering on a design and staff is comfortable with that request as well. Um, for the record, the applicant must obtain fire marshal approval for the proposed site plan before any of the uh, plans are approved by the town engineer. Um, 
So I believe that is still outstanding, but that doesn't specifically affect any of the requests tonight. So that, that'll just have to be worked out prior to site plan approval. Um, based on that, staff recommends the board grant the application subject to the attached conditions. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Do we have any questions for the applicant or Mr. Gonzalez? Um, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Brown. Yes, uh, for the applicant, Mr. Graham. Um, is the gravel, is there, a, is there cement between the site and the road? Or we'll be dra dragging gravel out onto the road. As you can see, we, we would have a type two driveway entrance. So that entrance would be paved. And actually the way we're designing uh, the warehouse is actually two separate buildings with a cover uh, that we'd be utilizing as the main entrance. And at night that gate can be locked. So from appearance from the street, it we're going to, develop this warehouse as residential look as possible. We worked with planning on the front to provide a large 50 foot buffer for the neighbors out there. And right where you see covered entry, there's a, a lockable gate at night. So essentially the whole operation will be screened from the street with the 50 foot buffer. And we do have that asphalt paving. So we're not dragging gravel out into the street. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Uh, we had quite a few of your neighbors uh, speak at an earlier application today, and none of them are here to speak now. I was listening to all that, so I, I understand their concerns. Any further questions from the board? Anything further from the applicant? I'll take that as a no. Yep. Uh, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Brown. I would make a motion to grant the application based on the staff report. A motion by Mr. Brown to grant the application. Tanner, are there any Second. covenants or restrictions? Uh, yes, which have been signed by the uh, applicant already. Mr. Brown said subject to the covenants and restrictions. Subject to the covenants <laughs> restrictions being executed. <laughs> Thank you. I saw Mr. Frugiari's hand go up. Second by Mr. Frugiari. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Extensions. The application is granted. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank Bye. you. Ms. Cruz, I'm still holding out for you on this last motion. <laughs> Okay, I do <laughs> uh, a motion to close the meeting um, for tonight. The motion by Ms. Cruz to close the meeting for tonight. Is there a second? Second. second. By Mr. Bruno, all in favor, opposed, Aye. abstentions. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all. Have a good night.